South Bend seeking another upset today. Six and zero Notre Dame, three and three Pittsburgh, and welcome to Notre Dame Saturday on NBC. Well, the big questions at the start of the season have been emphatically answered by the Irish. One of 11 unbeaten's left in college football. On the remaining schedule, no teams that are ranked. If Notre Dame wins out, very likely they will be in the college football playoff. But you know college football. It's all about what happens in the second half of the season, where the big legendary upsets happen. Pittsburgh's done that the last two years, knocking off number two in the country at the time. They'll try to do that today. How can they do it? We'll ask Heisman Trophy winner Doug Flutie when he and Catherine Tappan join me just before kickoff. But first, down to the field and the U.S. Bank, NBC Sports Report. A good Saturday to Liam McHugh and Chris Sims. Feels like fall at Notre Dame. As the leaves begin to change, so too do the expectations for the Irish. Did he catch it? Yes! Touchdown Irish! Six games, six wins. The constant of a defiant defense has partnered with an explosive offense. Book throws. And the touchdown. reasons to dream are real. But now, every hurdle gets taller, and in comes a slayer of giants. In each of the last two years, Pitt has beaten a number two ranked team. An unbelievable upset. And they're no stranger to South Bend and dramatic finishes here. The Panthers win in four overtime. Third overtime. Yes. Touchdown, Notre Dame. Today, the Panthers try to repeat their history, while the Irish hope to stay on course to add to theirs. Oh, That's the storyline. The weather's ideal. 49 degrees and sunny. The Irish a season high fifth in the polls. Pittsburgh off an overtime win at home against Syracuse just a moment ago. Brian Kelly speaking to his Irish team before they filed out of the locker room. We'll be back here in three and a half hours and we'll celebrate. But for the next three and a half hours, we are locked in on our job. And our job as Notre Dame football players is to go out there and dominate our opponent. That's what we train for. That's our training. We work too hard to do anything else. That's the standard. Are we clear on that? Yes, sir. And that's how we're going to play today. One play at a time, spot the ball, and let's go play. Let's pray. That's how they played the dominant second half, 45-23 in Blacksburg, beating Virginia Tech. This the only Irish home game in October. So set to take the field with the stakes as high as they've been all year. Here come the Irish. Third time in the last seven years, Brian Kelly's team has opened 6-0. and The quarterback who took over three games ago, Ian Book, since he's been the starter, this offense is averaging 46 points per game. Pittsburgh's got a great football history as well. They've been playing Notre Dame for over a century. They return to South Bend for the first time since 2012. Pat Narduzzi's team won at the eventual national champ, Clemson, two years ago, and did number two Miami's title hopes with an upset last year. His quarterback, sophomore Kenny Pickett, what a day for this kid. He's a Jersey kid. He grew up in a family that loved watching these Notre Dame Saturdays. Today, number eight gets to be on the other side of that experience. Down to the sideline, here's Catherine Tapper. Coach, your undefeated fifth-ranked Irish begin the second half of the season now. What areas do you still want to see your team improve upon? Well, now it's about consistency and performance and um, eliminating any of the distractions that go along with, you know, lofty ratings. And so they've got to show maturity. They've got to come out here and execute against a really good Pittsburgh team. And, uh, you know, that's the next part of this. Um, you know, they prepared very well. Now they've got to take the next start is, is executing for four quarters. So they'll get that chance to do it today. Ian Book makes his fourth start of the season and since he took over the offense has been rolling but how do you want to see your quarterback continue to develop. Well I think we've got to be able to hit a couple of deep balls uh, you know he's been really efficient and some of the shorter mid range passes uh, you know we've let some points on the board I think you know probably hitting some deep shots is important in, in making sure that we get this offense complete. All right, Coach thank you very much. Thank you. Mike. All right tap. Thank you with the Heisman Trophy winner Doug Flutie. Okay they're six and oh they've beaten the best teams on the schedule the way the season has played out. So what's the pressure now for Notre Dame. 
Well, usually I would say the deeper they go into the season, the more the pressure builds, and that's down the road. And Brian Kelly hinted to that. It's yeah. sort of getting there. But right now, I think they're still growing. I think they're getting better. Dexter Williams, addition to tailback two weeks ago, brings an explosiveness to the running game. Ian Book at quarterbacks distributing the ball. Everyone's touching the ball. Their confidence level is at an all-time high, and it's building. This is all still new. Ian Book's only been the quarterback for four weeks, True. so they should be improving. All right, you talked about Ian Book, so did Brian Kelly speaking with Catherine. The defense has been a constant all year. Defense in 2012, last time they played for the championship, was so big. What's different about this defense? When you go back to 2012, they were a bend, don't break, play good in the red zone, stop the run. This defense is different in their pass rush. They've got some beast up front. They can get after the passer, the ball's out, it creates turnovers, they get sacks, pressures on the quarterback, they've got some good corners that can play man coverage. It's a more dynamic defense. Pittsburgh, three touchdown underdog. How did they make it a close game? Run the football. 200-yard uh, rushers last week in the fourth quarter in overtime. That's how they won the game against Syracuse. Stick with that game plan. It takes pressure off your offensive line so you can throw the ball when you want to, not that you have to throw. They've played some good teams this year. They have played Penn State. They played Central Florida. They lost big in both of those games. They feel at least comfortable against this level of talent. Let's see how they do. The Panthers won the toss and deferred. The Irish will get the ball to start this absolutely awesome Saturday for football in South Bend. plus yard field goals at Heinz Field in the win over Syracuse in overtime last week. He will kick it. Michael Young is back deep to receive for the Irish. Second half of the season begins for Notre Dame. Off we go from South Bend with no return. The Irish will take it out at the 25 yard line. So let's uh, take a peek at the stars for Notre Dame on offense. Doug mentioned Dexter Williams, 161 and 178 in his last two games rushing. Miles Boykin also over 100 receiving in the last two. For week two, Trevor Ruland is the starting left guard with the season ending injury to Captain Alex Bars, who tore two ligaments in his knee. So Sam Mustafer has been a little more vocal to center, setting it up for Ian Book, the junior quarterback from El Dorado Hills Oak Ridge High School in California. It begins from the 25 and it's a completion to Alizé Mack the tight end a gain of six to begin it in front of the free safety Damar Hamlin. Well, that's what we've seen out of Ian Book in his starts that efficient short passing game very high percentage completions they'd like to see him hit a few more of the downfield ball. You see those last three games Doug 75 73 percent completion over 70 percent each game. And put some touch on that one. Got it to Williams. Dexter put a foot in the ground. Turned it upfield in the first down for the Irish at the 36. Shane Roy made the tackle. You said it. Great touch on the ball. Fields a defender getting between him and the back. Little up and over. Drop it in the bucket. Positive gain. Could have gone the other way. Could have been a mm -hmm. tip ball. Could, could have gotten ugly. Third plate, third pass. It is Mack and Alizé Mack fighting through people. He's starting to emerge. That talent is starting to meet the maturity. He's becoming a much more complete player. Gain of six there. The tight end position is becoming a strength for Notre Dame, and Mack here just using a little power and strength to get a positive gain out of, I mean, contact was made behind the line of scrimmage. Senior from Bishop Gorman High School in Las Vegas, his 20th reception there. First run attempt is Williams. That was strung out. Well played by the Pittsburgh defense. Keyshawn Camp, Richard sophomore from Lakeland, Florida, off the defensive line with the tackle. There's Camp. It's a Pittsburgh defense. You know, Pat Narduzzi, their head coach, and his bones are made on the defensive side of the ball. That's where he's become uh, so respected in college football, but uh, they've given up 33 points a game. In his defenses in general, he leaves his corners out there one on one a lot. Some shorter corners going to be on tall receivers, and they're aggressive up front and try to stop the run. They just went full hockey line change. They brought six new players on as Book fires to the far side, complete. And it's Chris Fink 
for the first down. And he kept going to the 48 yard line in front of DeMar Hamlin. Catch number 20 on the season for the senior. Chris Fink off coverage out of the slot. This is these are the throws that have been stealing for Ian Book. When he has off coverage, it's a timing throw. It's almost been automatic. Look four four to begin this one. Look deep. It was covered. Running into trouble and a sack by Rashad Weaver. That is the best pass rusher on this Pittsburgh team. Comes up with a big play, a loss of 16 yards. Weaver comes off the left side here. Book had a shot at airing this out deep. He had a shot at maybe Boykin down the field, held the ball. Weaver gets it. These are the negative plays that stop drives. If you can get pressure on the quarterback. Terrific play from Weaver as he stayed with it. Good coverage downfield. Sack three of the year for Weaver. Design run here for Book. Gets most of the sack yardage back to the 44 yard line. It's going to set up a third and about 13 yards coming up. Celine Brightwell, the tackle, though. Yeah, Ian Book showing some athleticism, can run with the football, makes people miss, extends plays behind the line of scrimmage, look downfield. He can run with the football. Third and long. This is where Pittsburgh is at its best defensively, disguising what they're doing. Book looking to take off here, lost the football on the side. I think the player was out of bounds when he recovered it. Let's see. It's Notre Dame ball. The player was in the white on the sideline when he fell on it. Dane Jackson over there. So a promising start to the drive end. Jackson the hit the ball was definitely free and available on that sideline but you'll see when Bright came in he was on the white when he took possession. And as you said third down they'll get a lot of looks out of this defense. Try to stay out of third and long. High snap back to Tyler Newsom. John Shannon, the snapper, had a bad one against Virginia Tech last week at the 14 yard line. Rafael Rujo Lopez is stopped and sent backwards. They'll mark him back at the 12, well covered by Aloe Gilman for the Irish. Four minutes in, opening quarter, Pittsburgh on offense for the first time when we come back. Talk to an agent today at 1 800 State Farm and by the well connected 2019 MKC. Everybody comes here and they do it. <laughs> Get your picture in front of what is known to so many folks around the world as Touchdown Jesus. It's technically the word of life mural in front of the Hesburgh Library here just outside the stadium in South Bend. But that picture has been taken a million times and it never gets old. And this will never get old for Kenny Pickett talking about this experience. Sophomore from Central New Jersey, Oakhurst, New Jersey. Grew up in a family that loved Notre Dame and now he starts a game here. A run for a couple of yards to begin with Quadri Olison, the big back. Tavon Coney, the tackle. Doug, we talked to him and he was just so excited about being here and getting this opportunity. He started the game against Miami last year and won it. Hasn't really had the great season off of that one moment last year. Yeah, and talking to Pat Narduzzi before the game, he said Kenny Pickett is fired up. There's no doubt about it. He's excited about this opportunity to be here. And the team loves him. He's a tough kid, a leader. Smart gets him in and out of plays protections. He knows his offense. Ooh, a lot of jet sweep motion and giving it, kick it to throw. Everything covered downfield. He comes down to Arujo Lopes. And Rafael will be tackled by Asmar Bilal, but he'll pick up a first down and move the chains. There's everybody else along with the quarterback Pickett on that Pittsburgh offense. Olison leading rusher, five touchdowns this year. Panthers missing their best wideout to Sear Mack for the second straight week. Up front, Alex Bookshire, the right tackle, he leads this offensive line. Four of these guys have their degree, and the center, the sophomore, Jim Marcy, the one without a degree, is a very good player. Those guys won the game in the fourth quarter in overtime last week against Syracuse. You see a lot of Maurice French, too, in that motion throughout the day. Hollison will gain a yard as Colin Kareem wraps him up and brings him down. This is what Pittsburgh would like to do. They'd like to be able to hammer the football, stay in good down and distance. Sean Watson, offensive coordinator, said that the game still has to slow down for Pickett. So you don't want him in a lot of third and longs where he's scanning the whole field and doing all the pass protection stuff. Uh, the first read he had, he was a little indecisive, moved out of the pocket, but it kept his vision up and hits the swing. The game still has to slow down a little bit for him. 
We brought Carson Van Lynn, extra offensive lineman, in here. It's second and nine. Olison couldn't get that lead block to find any Notre Dame players to hit. Gain of a couple. The tackle was made by Jerry Tillery, whose great season continues. Time for second in the FBS. Seven sacks on the year. We'll visit at halftime with the captain, Drew Tranquil, second in tackles despite playing with a broken bone in his hand. Julian Love off a great game, a touchdown and a fumble recovery and an INT as Sandman exited at Virginia Tech last week. Third and four. Darren Hall is the running back and Pickett throws incomplete. He was trying to get it over to Shockey Jack Louis, his wide receiver, who was blanketed by Julian Love. And after one first down, the Panthers will kick it to the Irish. Jack Louis trying to run a little pivot route there. Love has been excellent in man coverage. He gets his hands on his receivers. He said today he's going to be playing a little more wide side of the field because Troy Pride is out. He was usually the wide side corner, so Vaughn will come in at the weak side corner or short side corner. The Australian Kirk Christodoulou is the punter. We had movement up front. It was fourth and four. So that'll give a first down to Pittsburgh. Nico Fertitta for the Irish. Jump off. Side. Defense. Number 28. Five yard penalty results in a first down. And that's a turnover. That's a flat out turnover on fourth and four to jump. Hard count up there. Olison, one of the two back there in the personal protector spot calling the signals and for Tita the senior from Las Vegas mostly special teams contribution but a mistake there gives Pittsburgh a continued drive so Panthers have it at their own 34 and Pickett, three receivers this side he'll come to his fullback George Aston who goes nowhere Bilal again the senior from Indianapolis on his second tackle of the game. Aston's a true fullback now. They'll line up and hammer the football with him. But here off the bootleg action, he's the fullback in the flat. Great job by Bilal staying with his responsibility coming in. But it's going to be fun to watch 35 and some of the collisions and some of the lead blocks throughout the day. Aston for a fullback, like you said, Doug, plays a lot. He's already played, on average, about 35 snaps a game, about half a game. So it's an old school Pittsburgh offense. Pickett reads it and throws it. It is complete. A very short gain. Houston Griffith in there at the nickel to tackle Rafael Arujo Lopes, who had a 68-yard touchdown pass last week. Uh, Arujo Lopes caught a wide receiver screen, went down the sideline, a little stutter step, and froze everyone and took off. They have some athletes that if they French and Arujo Lopes there, if they get the ball in space, look out. Third and eight, Irish bring five, including the safety on pressure, and it's complete over the middle to midfield to Maurice French. His 17th catch of the year keeps this drive alive for the Panthers. Boy, nice job in the pocket, standing tall, in route coming into the middle of the field, lets it develop and puts it on the money. That's a nice job out of the pocket. Little stick at the top of the route, flatten it out. That's on Vaughn now. Vaughn's starting today in, in place of pride. French with a nice reception. Not real polished receivers, but athletes at the mm -hmm. receiver position for Pitt. To the Notre Dame side of midfield for the first time today. The 49, here is Quadri Olison met right away, and he is stopped. Tavon Coney, you figure with a fullback in the game today, Doug, the senior Coney will be very active on tackles. Yeah, there should be some collisions some coming up, meeting the back in the backfield. And I'll tell you, this, this will be their time to get a linebacker fullback type of day. Especially because Pittsburgh would love to run the ball as much as possible. Ashton and Coney will see a lot of each other. Coney, the leading tackler on this Notre Dame team. He and Drew Tranquil have been rarely off the field, and they have been mostly terrific. Second and ten. Kenny Pickett wants to throw. And in a tight window, it's brought down by Aaron Matthews. B yard shy of the first down. You do it in front of Dante Vaughn, seeing more action 
with Troy Pride not starting today. This is a beautiful throw. I'll tell you, Vaughn does a great job of staying on the route. It's just a simple curl route. He, he stays there and flat foot and breaks. Ball is just put in a perfect, perfect place outside. Nice delivery. Pick it. So it'll set up third and one. You see Carson Van Lynn, 87 in there. And a Wildcat direct snap to Olsen coming. And he's got the first down easily. With a gain of about eight. They went to this a lot in the second half last week with both Olsen and Darren Hall, the two backs, taking the direct snap. But 76, Dentino coming right to left, pulling. He hooks the outside defender. Actually, he was over already on the outside, hooking the outside defender. There was no contain on the outside. This is shaping to be what Pittsburgh would like. You know, exactly. they got a free turnover on the fourth and four by getting a first down on the punt formation. And like you said, their equation this is a drive that's going to take up half the opening quarter at least. Olison up the middle. He'll gain about four to the 28 yard line. You know, Doug, this is a day and age where you, know, you score 50 points, you spread it with five wide and no backs. So to see a running team like this is more the rarity in college football. And that's the type of team that can cause upsets. They can put your offense in the freezer. Well, what happens is your offense is used to getting back out on the field so often that you can have a wasted possession and it doesn't kill you. When the game gets short, when you're playing an option type team or a team that runs and grinds out the clock, it limits the number of possessions and you have a long time between possessions. And the 28 will be a toss to Hall, he uses speed to the edge, chased by Kareem. Got a good block from his wide receiver to get the first down the 20 yard line. So a nice job on the edge with a patient run by Darren Hall. Keeps this drive going. Hall just outruns Kareem around the side. That was a deception type play where you just. If everything goes one way, you try to finesse everyone, have them collapse and kick it out to the weak side like a naked bootleg. Great job so far. And the small things magnify in a game where possessions get limited, like Ian Book taking the first down sack, like Nico Fertitta jumping offside on fourth and four to punt. Toss left, Paul with speed and wiggle, puts the shoulder down. He's going to gain nearly nine yards on first down. Aloe Gilman met him right near the uh, 12 yard line. We'll check the mark. It'll be second and one. Pittsburgh misses the crack block, but it doesn't matter. He's coming right downhill. These are big physical backs delivering blows at the end of the run. Going for it, lower the shoulder, drive, and Hall's the finesse guy. That's right. They're both 225 on the scale. Hall's 5'11, a little more wiggle. Olsen 6-2, Richwood Sr. from Niagara Falls, packs a little more punch. The Irish defense has been good in the red zone, forcing field goals, but here's a run. Oh, maybe bouncing that outside, Hall could have gotten there. He's still got the first down at the seven-yard line, and all of a sudden we're very late with his first quarter on this opening Pittsburgh drive. Said he had the cutback lane and then he bounced that to the outside. Might have had an opportunity to score. But still, the, the, the job at the point oh, is he telling me. No doubt. <laughs> it's like not. Andre Powell coaches up the running backs and they were that close to making a big play. First and goal, they go back to the Wildcat. And Quadre Olison, the running back. He's going to get stretched out. And Drew Tranquil starts it. Aloe Gilman finishes a loss of two. Tranquil, 23 over here, just parallels the back, doesn't get blocked at all, scraping along. He's trying to stay even with him and then contain, go get him. Downhill, when he reads something, he goes. He, he determines right. what gap he has and he takes all for it. And he's got the club hand over there with the cast on it. Still managed to bring guys down. Injured against Stanford. Notre Dame runs Shane Simon, linebacker, in. Tolson again up the middle. It's time and touchdown. So they keep going to it. And Quadri Olison runs it in. And Pittsburgh with a lengthy drive pays it off to take the lead. 76. Dentino pulling left to right. The left guard here makes the big block, but it's the deception, the fake on the jet sweep, and you get the flow of the linebackers, and it just 
departed north and south, and you're not going to pull him down with an arm tackle. Team leading six touchdown for Quadri Olison. And the drive kept alive by the penalty. Turns into a touchdown for the Panthers. Alex Kessman able to knock that one through. A 10 plus minute drive. Pittsburgh's got belief, and they've also eaten a lot of that first quarter. And they do it with a payoff. The Olison six makes it 7 0 Pittsburgh. app to watch thousands of live sporting events stream for free with your NBCSN subscription hockey season underway we're a few weeks away from the Breeders Cup catch it all details NBC sports.com slash live the Irish trail for just the second time this year remember the game at Wake Forest a few weeks ago they trailed three nothing they trailed for two minutes and 13 seconds total this season Georgia and West Virginia have not trailed among power five teams Bama's trail for 70 seconds. Nick Saban said it was concerned. Here's a touchback, and the Irish will take over at their own 25. And they'll do it facing their biggest deficit of the season. Just 7 up. Team with the Michigan State defense before. Then his defense is a 4 3. Rashad Weaver already a sack. Tied for the national lead in fumble recoveries with three. Elijah Reynolds from Brooklyn starts. Quentin Werginis, the senior captain, for his ACL in practice this week. Awful story for the Panthers. Dane Jackson, playmaking corner, had his second career touchdown last week for the Panthers. So they face the Irish. Notre Dame takes over. Second drive, their own 25. And very stout up front against. Williams, no place to go for Dexter. Patrick Jones, the second, joins Amira Watts on the tackle. All of a sudden, the energy level for Pittsburgh defensively is going to pick up because of what your offense just did, controlling the ball for most of the first quarter. You're resting. Second and 12, and Book will go up top. Suit chase play, pull complete at the 30-yard line. Pickup of seven for the junior receiver from Canada. It was a third and medium down distance. That might eliminate some of the blitzing, but you'll you'll probably get a straight man-to-man -man coverage. And that blitzing they're really good at. That's what they, they do so well. They brought a corner blitz already early in the game. Third and five. Facing pressure here. Book pulled it down. Gonna take off. He will get there. Pull the first down and more. Up the sideline. Gain of 17. Ian Book made a good choice. Got a block. I believe it was Alizé Mack who sprung him. Dexter Williams in the backfield. Something he's not great at, but he's gotten better. Pass protection. Boom. Ian Book feels it. Steps up through and off and running. Great block on the perimeter. From the 48, Book again taking off. With all kinds of trouble. Now throws. And it's intercepted. He threw it late and Jason Pinnock come up. Came up with the pick, and he's down at the 38 yard line. Book had kind of reloaded through it late, and Pinnock from Windsor, Connecticut, comes underneath and gets his first interception as the quarter ends. It's pitch seven, Notre Dame nothing. We're back at Notre Dame Stadium after these messages reload the station. You're watching Notre Dame football on NBC. Ian Book's looking left. Pinnock is on Boykin. He might have had a throw there. Dexter Williams breaks open all by himself, but he comes off. Pinnock comes off his receiver, sees the ball in the air, breaks on it. There might have been a rhythm throw out of the break, but it got disrupted. So then the eyes go elsewhere. Never saw Pinnock fall off his receiver. Nice job by Jason Pinnock, who's really been coming on. He played a very big role against the multiple receivers of Syracuse last week. Coaches like what he's seeing. More starts. More playing time and production. So first down run by Allison. We stopped for no gain. Jerry, uh, rather, Khalid Karim, I should say, is in there on that attack. So important for the Notre Dame defense to have a three and out and get rest. They've been on the field the whole first quarter. First down stops, second down stops, create third long situations. Pittsburgh ran the ball, has run the ball extremely well so far. 
Saw Clark Lee, the defensive coordinator, first year as the defensive coordinator. Year two on this Notre Dame staff. His defense has been very consistent, very good in terms of limiting pass defense efficiency from the offense. This was short game. Rafael Arujo loops, tackled by Julian Love, who is having a sensational season for the Irish. Was added to the Chuck Bednarik watch list. That's the award that goes to the best defensive player in the country. So it creates a third long situation. Now you know that Pitt has to throw the football. Now the offensive line of Pitt has to face a pass rush. These are the situations Pitt would love to avoid and that Notre Dame wants to be in defensively. Turn loose the pass rush. Dalen Hayes did not play last week with a stinger. He is back in the Irish lineup. As a matter of fact, he's the one who got going first. I think he was offside at the top of the screen, but it was induced by a false start. First time we're going to hear from Gary Patterson, our referee here today. Let's see. Offside. Nope. Defense, number nine, in the zone, neutral zone. Call the offense to react. Five yard penalty. Third down. Which we initially thought, we saw the umpire signaling false start, but the correct call made, and that makes it dug third and manageable. Dalen Hayes moves early. Millen moves to <laughs> to react <laughs> really quick. I think he was going to move anyway. M Millen was starting to rock back in his stance. Hayes saw him try <laughs> to get the jump. So now this Pittsburgh team that has run it 12 times for 50 yards to start this game just needs three. Olsen will go up the middle and that's tracked down by Tillery from behind. Having an all America type season Jerry Tillery comes up with a big stop it's fourth and three the Panthers will punt. So the fullback usually leads you to where to play is but Tillery penetrates cuts him off and makes the play from the backside. I mean he just penetrating getting through and, and in this style of offense usually you can follow the fullback fullback couldn't get there to be the lead blocker because of the penetration. Chris Dudulu, if you watch the Pittsburgh opening blowout loss to Penn State had trouble handling the ball. And that wet day at Heinz Field. Been no problem since. Ozzie kicks a line drive, 38 yarder. Fink from the 18 gets through the first wave. And they'll return it seven to the 25 yard line with forward progress. Two and a half gone by, second quarter. Third Notre Dame drive coming up. Because understanding what's important to you matters. By Jersey Mike's subs via sub above. By the unexpected energy of Exxon Mobil, energy lives here. And by Verizon, now go mix and match family unlimited plans. Aaron Donald still a big factor, of course, the undefeated Rams in the NFL with so many great pit alums over the years. Marino, Ditka, Tony Dorsett. 129th year of Pittsburgh football, nine national titles. Didn't even mention guys like Larry Fitzgerald, Hugh Green. Great legacy and tradition. Hook up top, complete to Cole Komet. The Notre Dame tight end gains about eight yards on this first down. Komet, a pitcher in baseball, the closer, athlete, tight end, releases off the naked bootleg, simple pass in the flat. He, these quick rhythm movement passes is where Ian Book is, is at his best. Well, it starts with this Notre Dame offense, which has been explosive of late, including Williams, the running back, who gets three here and gets a first down for the Irish. I feel like he struggled so far on the outside routes because the corners are making contact. It's not a pure timing. The timing is being disrupted a little bit, and he's holding the ball and coming off his outside routes early. Aaron Banks in at left guard for Notre Dame. Very promising young offensive lineman. Their book took off and uh, almost no game there. Elias Reynolds, the redshirt sophomore from Brooklyn, who's now the starter in on the tackle. There's Banks, sophomore Alameda, California. Trevor Ruland has taken over the starting left guard spot with the injury to the captain, Alex Bars. But they love Banks, who is a tackle, and they moved him inside to see what he can do at guard after the injury to the leader, Bars, up front. Toss Williams to the right and Pittsburgh is filling every gap here gain of two Reynolds on the tackle. Reynolds in the middle sliding 
reading, just mirroring the back and filling. Good penetration, taking guys off their blocks. In these situations, I feel like even on the last drop back pass that Ian Book's coming off his read a little bit early, a little antsy. No third and long here, third and nine. Panthers rush four. Book is nobody open downfield. He's taken off to the sideline. He's going to get out of bounds. Nothing to gain there, and it will be another punt for the Irish. And downfield coverage is good. Demar Hamlin chased the quarterback to the sideline. Okay, on the near side, it's a zone coverage. Maybe he got the pivot route underneath, but he was looking right first and then came back left, and there was nothing there. This is the weak side where there's a corner, there's a safety over the top of that route ready to break on that throw, so he was not open either. So Tyler Newsom will kick it away for the sluggish Irish here to get going. Good kick into the sun. Tough to see down there on this sunny day. A nice job by Rizzo Lopes to catch the 48 yard kick with no return. Exactly the way the Panthers have drawn it up a third of the way through this one. Start of Saturday Night Live back in 1975. That's live for everyone, 1130 Eastern, 830 out on the West Coast. Uh, by the way, Seth Myers, Northwestern alum, born in Evanston. Photographic evidence he put up on Twitter this week. He caught an extra point, and snuck it out of this stadium. 23 years ago, Seth, they were asking for the ball back when we were walking in today. So we can watch Seth tonight and Paul Simon as well, the musical guest on Saturday Night Live. Pittsburgh drive starts at the 15. Darren Hall on the toss to the left. He's going to gain seven first down yards. Asmar Bilal is there. Well, we talked about Kenny Pickett growing up a Notre Dame fan in Central Jersey, Oakhurst, New Jersey. How much of a Notre Dame fan? You know, his school pictures, you always want to wear something. Second grade, Notre Dame for the school picture. And his dogs are named Brady, wait for it, and Quinn. <laughs> After the Irish quarterback. And his mom and dad, Ken and Case here. But dad, who's the real Notre Dame fan, he had to wear something Brady wore a green pit hat today. That love of the Irish somewhere inside, but he's rooting for his son's team. A flag is down on this run by Hall. Drew Tranquil on the tackle. Holding. Number 87. Offense. 10 yard penalty. Second down. Catherine's got more on Kenny Pickett. Well, Mike, it goes back further than second grade. His mom, Casey, told me that Kenny's nursery was all Notre Dame, and he had an Irish jersey signed over his bed by Joe Montana. She said it's just surreal that he's playing against the team that he grew up cheering for. His dad, Ken, told me that his advice to his son for today, have fun, play your game, and enjoy the moment. Nearly 20 family and friends are here at Notre Dame Stadium. The Pickets made the 10-hour drive from New Jersey to South Bend in the family RV that travels to every single one of Kenny's games, Mike. Yeah, and I mentioned that green hat. <laughs> I don't know if that's coincidence or not, but just a little green. He had always loved to come here. He'd been here once, the dad, son Kenny's first experience. From the 11, he's pressured. He got rid of it in the sidelines. And it's caught by Hall, but he lost his landmark out of bounds after a gate of three. By the way, the last holding penalty was on Carson Van Lynn. which put Pitt in a big hole, facing third and 11 here. And these are the tough situations that you don't want to turn the ball over in your own end. Don't take a bad sack or strip from the be cautious with the ball here. This is not the forte of the pit off. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if they ran it right now. They, it's okay to punt once in a while. I didn't say that. Notre Dame showing pressure in the middle. Drops out. Pick it with Todd. Fires to the wide side. Nearly caught. Incomplete. Would have been a terrific catch for Arujo Lopes, but Houston Griffith was over there. So the Panthers will kick it away. It's Arujo, Arujo Jones. He's got the route. The ball pretty well thrown, just a little high. Oh, great effort reaching for it. He had a guy off an inside technique, beat him in man coverage. Had an opportunity there to convert a long. third and long. Yeah, long throw from the wide side. Chris Tadulu with a kick to Chris Fink. Irish figured to get the best field position of the game on this one. Into pit territory and brought down at the Panther 49. 8.08 to go. It's been a long time since Notre Dame's gone this long in a game without score. Three. Longest game in each school's history. The four overtime. Pittsburgh win by three. Irish won in 2010, 23 to 17. And got the triple overtime game that the 
Irish work their way towards the then BCS National Championship game. You see, it's been a very comfortable season for the Irish, but now they have trailed for more than half a quarter. Four times they've trailed all year. They try to get some misdirection and think. He only gains two. Catherine, what's the mood down there? Well, for most of this first half, Mike, each time Ian Book came off the field, Brian Kelly was grabbing him for a few words. And on that last drive, Kelly and offensive coordinator Chip Long were pretty vocal with Book. Brian Kelly even going as far as to physically demonstrate to Book what he wanted him to do. And Book's teammates giving him pats on the shoulder. Clearly, pit defense frustrating these guys, Mike. Well, Tony Jones Jr. trying to do something about that. Gets a third and short with that run up the middle to the 41-yard line. There's a solution if you can start running the ball north and south. But I think the timing being disrupted on the outside with the receivers, he might, Ian Book might be either a little unsure what he's seeing or not being patient enough for the route to develop. Third and a yard from the 40, and it will be Jones running up inside. Got a good, tough yard and a half to get that first down. Initial contact was behind the line of scrimmage. But Jones powers the 220 pounds to make the first down. Number 40, Folsom breaks inside. Contacts made deep in the backfield. A great leg drive on a crucial conversion. If you saw Amira watch 34, he took Sam Mustafer, the center, in the back there. They are getting a good push in the middle thus far. Book first down throw. Tight coverage for Boykin. Incomplete pinup all over him. And a flag is thrown by the quarterback. Personal foul, roughing the passer. Number eight, defense, 15 yard penalty, automatic first down. Dwayne Hendricks. Kelly telling his guys to settle down. Narduzzi didn't like the call. Saw the extra contact there, but it, you know, the whole body weight falling is an NFL thing, not a college thing. Terry McCauley, our rules analyst, is with us here in the booth. And, uh, Terry didn't think that, that was something that should have been called. No, it just looked like a normal tackle, Mike. I, I, you know, a little high, but really not not forcible at the head and neck area. Great for the Irish. Pass to Fink complete. Gain of eight to the 15-yard line. A first down to Mar Hamlin, the safety of the tackle. On the play that was rough in the passer, though, was good press coverage and disruption of a route, and the timing of Ian Book's feet and arm were out of sync. There, an off defender, quick rhythm route, bang right in the chest completion. Pittsburgh's doing a good job of that. I'm, I'm right there with you, Doug. They're making that contact and taking the timing away, which Book has thrived under in these three games. Here's the pressure off the corner. He flipped it forward, incomplete, trying to get it to Fink, but he really felt Dane Jackson firing in as the corner off the short side of the field. Dane Jackson coming off this edge here. You want your, I, I don't know if there's a, there should be a conversion on the outside of a quick hitch or some type of sight adjust. A conversion getting, meaning if you see that coming, there's a wide receiver route that gets run? Right, he's going to just snap it around at about six yards, turn around, give me the ball because the next defender is 15 yards off. Timeout, time out. Pittsburgh. First time out of the half. It's much more difficult for the quarterback to read that One than the receiver. Time out. Time out. But Ian Book saw it and the receiver did not or react. You saw him almost. Uh, Brett Favre slash Aaron Rodgers like just get rid of the ball with a shovel to avoid taking that hit that was coming off that corner blitz. That's an interesting time here Doug because it, there's the 6 and 0 there's the pressure it's the top of the college football playoff after that big road hurdle at Virginia Tech was handled. Is it a little bit of that who knows. Football wise how much of it is Pittsburgh's defense in the first half? I think opinion? just Pittsburgh's being very physical both offensively and defensively in the defensive line shutting down the run game and on offense running the football that that first drive was impressive the way they ran the football so it's a physicality now maybe there's a little bit of your number five now as Notre Dame starting to read your press press clippings you get to that point in the season where you start to eye week by week how the pressure might build. Saw 57, Trevor Ruland take back that left guard spot. Aaron Banks was in for a series. Ruland has returned. Third and two, and Book throws it complete. That was a Mack with a first down just inside the 12 yard line with Phil Campbell, the third, on the tackle. Jarrett should be able to get a first down just inside the two. Going to get on the board for the first time today. It is Jones on the carry. He'll only get two yards to about the 10 
yard line. This is a Pittsburgh defense, as I said before, their rankings aren't good. They've given up 33 a game. They've given up 420 yards a game, 200 yards a game on the ground. But right now, they have played a very solid first 25 minutes. They're showing you a lot. Like, even there, there was a slant on the defensive line, two corner blitzes so far. They're really mixing up what they're doing defensively. Second and eight from the 10. Book looking Enzo. The throw underneath. Mack did not hold on. Incomplete as he was tagged by Elijah Zeiss. The starting linebacker for the Panthers. It'll set up third and eight. Well, this is just a reaction. He's actually in pass protection, sees Book in trouble, so he slips out into the flat and tries to, to give him a, an outlet. Now you're sitting at third down, got to throw the ball from the pocket. Ian Book has to be as patient as possible, but you're getting a lot of different looks out of this three down look defensively. And we get a whistle in Pittsburgh. Time out. Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh. Second time out. Two timeouts here half. within four plays on this drive One minute after seeing out. what Notre Dame set up for offensively. So you mentioned the Irish are at number five in the country. And then you need to start looking at what's going on week to week in terms of the other teams in the top ten. Alabama, Georgia at one and two. Alabama's got Missouri tonight. Georgia and LSU a day game in Death Valley. Ohio State sluggish early is pulled out uh, away from Minnesota I should say Clemson off West Virginia at Iowa State not going to be an easy game tonight Washington and Oregon kicking off in Eugene Penn State's got Michigan State and that Central Florida team's good both uh, both of us got a chance Doug to watch them against Pittsburgh the game the Panthers lost. 45 to 14 in Central Florida is solid. Talk about speed and athleticism. And there's two of those teams that are in the feeder right now. You look down their schedule and you really don't see a loss. And then you saw two SEC teams sitting at the top. Lot to play out. Third and eight. Book is pressure. He's rolling. He's running. He's not going to get there. He tackled the five. That's three and a half short of the first down, and the Irish should take the points down here. Go for the field goal, and the holder is going to be Nolan Henry, by the way. Safety's moving over to top, so he doesn't have a one on one throw on the outside. Steps up through, decides to take off, just can't get there. It's very, I think he's a little confused in what he's seeing in the secondary. So Ian Book has been the holder, but since he's the starting quarterback, Brian Kelly would like to have somebody else holding Nolan Henry. Deeper down in the quarterback depth chart, number four is holding for the all time leading score at Notre Dame now. Justin Yoon, 22 yard field goal attempt. The hold happens just fine, and Yoon puts the Irish on the board for the first time today. Good field position turns into a field goal, but Pittsburgh maintains the lead. On Monday, Doug. Manifest all new Monday right here on NBC. Terrific new show. Mike, there was a stowaway on the plane. Was there? Don't give it away. Is, for that, that. is that what happened? Well, people don't go back and binge watch. Don't give the whole thing away. But well, how about if, <laughs> if you're just trying to sneak on a flight to get from A to B and you come back five and a half years later? That's the whole premise of the show. But you stuck on, or did they have something to do with it? Hold that thought for two and a half quarters. Manifest Monday on NBC. <laughs> Jonathan Gore to kick it off for the Irish. This will be good hang time. The good kick. It's a touchback. Pitt takes over the 25. How about top performances brought to you by Mercedes Benz? And we go back to the last time Pitt was here in 2012. Three overtimes against number three Notre Dame. And Sierra Woods fumble. The second overtime. It gave Pittsburgh a chance, but Kevin Harper missed a 33 yard field goal in the third overtime. Everett Golson ran it in from the yard out. A lot of storylines, a lot of pressure, a couple of number twos on the field at the same time in that game. All part of the Irish surviving against Pittsburgh 29 to 26 in three OTs. And, and who knows, it might be that kind of game here again this afternoon. Panthers three and out their last two drives. It's Maurice French sweeping around the edge. Julian O'Quara hangs on with a left hand and brings him down. After a gain of four, O'Quara was ejected from the game in Virginia Tech for a targeting foul with 20 seconds left in the first half last week because it happened then not after halftime he is back in the lineup today 
where you're one-on-one -on -one in the open field with French and be able to hang on and pull him down, that's that's an achievement. Bakari is an elusive pass rusher, slips off the tackle inside, spin moves, everything. 41 in the middle of the Irish defensive line. Kurt Heinisch, a Pittsburgh kid. He's right in there. He's dying to get into the backfield for the Panthers here. It's Kenny Pickett back to pass with time. Heinisch is held as he's trying to get away, and Pickett's just going to bench it incomplete the feet of French. Nice patience on that. Uh, he didn't have anything down the field. He, he gave it a good hard look. The secondary passed things off and tried to keep it alive. Took a shot on the sideline. Mike. Yeah, it was, it was Coach Hank. Mike. I thought you were Coach Mike. Any, any, Heisman Doug, anytime you want to call me, it's all good. I think it was trying to hope something came free and he didn't. Tariq Gracie is in the game for the Irish. 35 freshman corner from California. He's going to be bottom of your screen. One of the five DBs on third and five. Big snap. Irish bring pressure. And Pickett is hit as he throws incomplete. It was a Quara from around the edge. Almost got there. That's been the story. A ton of pressures on the season. And a third straight three and out for the Irish team. Watch him get Booker's, Booker's hands off him. Watch the use of his hands coming around the edge. Whack. Mm. Gone. These pass rushers, they, they worked a lot together in the offseason. Kareem, Okwara. Tremendous performance thus far this year. Dalen Hayes in there as well. Here's Chris DeDulu to kick it one more time. Again, they're trying to get Notre Dame to jump with the hard count. That time, Pittsburgh was guilty. Ball start. Number seven. Offense. Five yard penalty. Four foul. Jazzy Stocker there. You see Brian Poley in the her name special teams coach. He was right next to Brian Kelly. And uh, he was pointing out something. Don't know uh, if he saw something in Pittsburgh trying to draw the Irish off, which they did earlier. It's a more drastic penalty when the defense jumps. <laughs> That's right. Chris Didilu's kick, 41 yards with all that traffic around him. Fink calmly makes the fair catch. You punt returned before, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. I've been back there. It's no fun. They're getting way too close for my liking now. <laughs> Great job when they are in man coverage of getting their hands on the receivers and disrupting timing. Give you the change up looks of zone. Again, disrupt the timing of routes. Give you different looks. Confuse the quarterback. Ian Book has held on to the football a little longer than he's used to. The rhythm of the passing game has not been there. Credit to the defense of the Panthers and the numbers for Book, 8 of 11 to the high completion percentage, but only 51 yards. And the interception that was brought in by that man, Jason Pinnock. This is Pittsburgh defense, the kind of defensive efforts you've seen from Pat Narduzzi when he was the coordinator at Michigan State. Continuing here, first down from the 34. Book going to go a little bit deeper. Overthrows Alize Mack, an incomplete. There were a couple of passes to open receivers that Book overshot last week. Couldn't put the perfect touch on that one. Another corner blitz. Paris Ford came that time from from the short side of the field. Narduzzi, they're they're just dialing it up, change up the looks, confuse the quarterback, make him a little uncertain of what he's seeing, and then you're hesitant with the ball. Second and ten, and that pass is caught by Kevin Austin. The freshman receiver gets it to the 48-yard line. It'll be a first down. Dennis Briggs on the tackle for the Panthers. Making the 47 officially for Austin. He's got four catches now on the season. Dexter Williams, the running back, has not broken a big one yet here. Book will be chased. That initial look has not been there throughout. Nobody's open downfield. Just a run out of bounds, gain a couple of yards. I mean, we have not seen Ian Book hold the ball this much and have to move out of the pocket this much. Right. It, it's got to be the looks he's seeing downfield. There was a wheel route that gets doubled, and, the, and Austin on the in route covered. Nothing there. And wide side, now maybe if Claypool just sits out there and waits, he's got to throw. But mm -hmm. again, this is well after the fact, once he's moved and starting to scramble. Third or four man rush again. Book takes the shot towards Boykin, who brings him in at the 20 yard line. Miles Boykin gains just about 30 yards in front of Pinnock. First down, Notre Dame. This time, Book was more patient with the ball. Here we go down the bottom on a corner route. It's not a smooth route. Little grab and turn. 
but it happened quickly enough. It wasn't too disruptive. But again, it's not a real pure timing route, which is what Ian Book has been used to happening. From the 21, Book off the left hash, off the hands of Fink. But incomplete. Rare that anything is too hot for Chris Fink to handle. Yeah, that was a little hot. It was on the other route. But Doug, uh, you've been there, and you said it before. It's just his fifth start career, fourth this year. When you see this kind of coverage, sometimes that quarterback clock can start moving a little bit faster than you're used to. Oh, yeah, you speed up your feet a little bit. You get that rhythm going. You want the ball to be gone, and the receiver's still getting off a defender. Well, quick release there. Alizé Mack, the tight end, caught it. 15, hit high by Pinnock as he was being brought down by Briggs. The captain, that strong safety spot for the Panthers. And on top of that, you're getting a lot of multiple looks. If you get the third down, you get a three down look, in which there's bodies all over the place where people can blitz from either side of the field. You're getting corner blitzes off the short side of the field. I've seen at least three corner blitzes already. It just, you know, your head's spinning. You're, you're trying to see everything. Notre Dame might need a timeout here. Yeah, they're going to get one. There was a little bit of confusion of what play they wanted to get in there. Clock was Notre starting Day. to run First down. Third and five coming up inside One of two minute minutes. Timeout. Are we gift wrapping this? No thanks, it's for me. I need it really big. Dad, where are you? I'm orbiting planet Chicago. Shouldn't you be weightless? What? <laughs> well, I'm going out for a spacewalk. Love you. Love you too. You want to stay close to home, even when you're away. We help your money keep up. Visa, everywhere you want to be. Chip Long, Notre Dame offensive coordinator, Brian Kelly et al. Trying to figure out a, an answer and a way to get some success against Pat Narduzzi's defense. 52 years old. He was at Michigan State for eight years with Mark D'Antonio as the defensive coordinator and with Mark Dean. Cincinnati before that you see his pedigree is he has taken over this Panther program eight and five in his first two seasons a disappointing five and seven last year but the victory over Miami at home a great way to end the season very familiar with these two guys 11 years together with that Cincinnati program back on the map I remember when Brian Kelly was hired in Cincinnati Narduzzi was the interim coach for that bowl game before Kelly took over and that's when their staff left for Michigan State. Third and five, Book's got a crosser, and Fink is stopped a couple of shy of the first down. It is Cam Bright on the tackle. It's fourth and a yard and a half, and the Irish are going to go for it. Bright reacts up quickly. I mean, you're going to see Fink coming across underneath. Nothing up the field. Boom, underneath. Getting zone covered. But this is a situation where Notre Dame wants to stick it in the end zone, so going for it on fourth and two. A little bit better spot than I thought. So it'll be a yard for Notre Dame here. Remember, Pittsburgh gets the ball to start the second half. Extra tight ends in, including Brock Wright playing fullback. And it'll be a pass to Michael Young. And he caught it. First down, Notre Dame, the nine. First and goal, Irish. Michael Young's a motion guy coming around. He works his way back and just at speed out into the flat. Great job on the, the change of direction within the motion to create a little separation and the trust in Ian Book to throw the ball on fourth and short. And when you see 11 coming with him, you know you have man coverage over there. It gives you a read. When you start to see it, send the guy in motion, it gives you a read on what coverage will be. Claypool comes in motion here. First and goal. Book, look out, in trouble. Cannot get away. He'll go down. I don't know who they give credit to. And you got to watch a throat slash gesture from Dwayne Hendricks, number eight, after he and Rashad Weaver combined for the sack that takes it back to the 17 yard line. Timeout here, Notre Dame, back in 30. That first and goal situation. There's Hainsey at right tackle, 72. Hendricks on the outside coming. He beats him up the field and then folds back under to get the sack himself. Hendricks had three sacks last year, first one of this year. It's hard to tell if it was a throat slash or some other gesture. His hand came across his face mask near the neck. Pressure coming, second and goal, the corner blitz. And Book scrambles to get a yard. So right now, Notre Dame struggling with where the pressures are coming from on this Pittsburgh team. 27 seconds to go. Boy, he comes down in in a loop around. 
but there was the corner blitz coming from the weak side. They have to start sight adjusting that and throwing the ball out into the flat quickly. Third and goal. Again pressure. Book is hit and brought down by Dennis Briggs. Timeout Notre Dame to set up what will be a 42 yard field goal. But the timeout. story here first Notre and Dame goal and three final. blitzes timeout by Pittsburgh. Half. Please reset the game clock to 11 seconds. Avery Davis. 11 seconds. Young guy in the backfield. Here he comes from from deep. And number three, Avery Davis in the backfield doesn't see it coming. Steps inside, late getting to the outside. Sack. They're bringing it from every direction. All these multiple looks. You're going to have to start going to quick rhythm passing, where the ball's out. But they've been playing man. The but Pittsburgh's been playing man coverage against that and taking that away. Right. So you go to your pick plays. Rubs. <laughs> Rubs. I'm sorry. Well, the, the corner blitz from the outside edge is very difficult to see for a quarterback. The right. only hint is that the safety on that side of the field gets wider than usual, and you don't always see it. 41 yard field goal attempt for Yoon, and Pittsburgh will take its final timeout, timeout of the half. Pittsburgh, just the third and final timeout of the half. And that gives us a chance to remind you that One the State Farm timeout. halftime report is coming up. In 11 seconds of clock time with Liam McHugh and Chris Sims. We'll see what Chris saw during that first half of that Pittsburgh defensive effort. Upset in the SEC today and a uh, conversation with Drew Tranquil, their name's captain. He's overcome a couple of ACL injuries. He's got that wrapped hand with a broken bone in his hand. Got married in the offseason. Uh, really terrific young man, a great definition of a student athlete. You'll uh, get to hear a little bit of Drew's thoughts on the start of this season and his career in South Bay. Coming up, Liam and Chris have a State Farm halftime for you. And Pat Narduzzi, as he has drawn up, taking a lot, of no a lot of notes in that reporter's notebook. It's a good story to write in the first half. For 41, Pittsburgh runs an extra player off. They have 11 now. Brian Kelly wanted a call there. Doesn't get it. And Yoon gets the field goal from 41. 7 6. The Panther lead is one. And we are back in 30 seconds. Alan Pinkett's record that stood for a third of a century during the game at Virginia Tech on Saturday night. One of his youth in Korea, hockey player growing up. Justin Yu now 51 field goals that ties John Carney for second on the all time list. Six away from Kyle Brinza, who has 57 the all time mark. He's going to come out here and kick this off, put it on the ground to make French pick it up. And run the clock out for the half as French is brought down at the 32 yard line. Three touchdown dog. Panthers come into South Bend and like they usually do, make it a tight game. At the break, hit seven Notre Dame six. State Farm halftime report with Liam and Chris coming up after these messages and a word from New York, the local NBC station. This was going to be a difficult challenge by the pedigree of Pittsburgh playing here. The upset success of Pat Narduzzi the last two years. They won at Clemson. They beat number two Miami when it looks like the Canes so that turnover chain were unbeatable. Kickoff return coming here to start the half. It is Maurice French for Pittsburgh. French who has a touchdown return this year in the opening game of the season. It's across midfield. He's down the sideline and he's gone. Maurice French all the way. Second half kickoff. Touchdown Panthers. 99 yards. That kick had good hang time, but it was right in the middle of the field. And French had a terrific return. It's a tight crease, but he trusts the blocking and hits it with speed and steps through. Once he's there, it's just pure speed. He's dangerous in the open field. It's the same way if he were to catch wide receiver screens and everything else. This kid is dynamic. French took the opening kickoff of the season back 91 yards against Albany. A great way to start the Panthers season and what a way to start this second half for Pittsburgh. Alex Kessman on for the extra point. 
And a stunned crowd here in South Bend as the Panthers have taken a 14 6 lead. He's just following. He gets a little kick out, and there's a crease. So he goes north south, and it's all over. I mean, they're right there with his speed. It's already over. Door couldn't get him. They're not pushing the sideline with Fertitta or Gilden chasing him. So Jonathan Door and kickoffs this year have been a story for Notre Dame. He has a huge leg, but has not performed as well in games as he does during practices. And for example, Brian Kelly turned to Justin Yoon at the end of the Virginia Tech game last week just to get that guaranteed touchback. They're trying to develop Dorr because he shows the skill, but he kicked a couple out of bounds each of the first two games this year. That time left one in the middle of the field for French, who brings it back for Pat Narduzzi's team. Yeah, the only kickoff return by an ACC player thus far this year. And adds one there, a second for him on the season. Kessman kicked it, and from three deep, Young will take a knee. The Irish will take over the 25 to the stunned Notre Dame sideline. Here's Catherine. Well, Mike, you and Doug were talking in the first half about Pittsburgh's secondary really disrupting the Notre Dame offense. I spoke to Pat Narduzzi at halftime, and he told me that's all part of the plan. That's exactly what they want to do. They want to keep Ian Book in the pocket. Panthers had three sacks in the first half, and Narduzzi still said that they left a couple out there. And on offense, he told me we've got to score more points. We can't keep them off the board all day long. Mike? Well, you can see that. It's going to be a deeper hole now for Brian Kelly's team tap. Irish offense will start at the 25 and book will keep on the run up the middle Ian book. He's got the longest Notre Dame run of this day with a 22 yarder and that's a 15 yarder before Jason Pinnock made the tackle. Well, that might be one of the answers or quarterback runs uh, to, to get the running attack started when you run the quarterback you do the zone reads then you can account for everyone. Here is Book throwing to Alizé Mack, fifth catch for the tight end. Mack will gain just about 10. He'll be a half yard short of the first down. Dennis breaks the tackle. Chip Long's done a good job of giving him a couple of go-to plays right away to get the offense started. I, I, I'm thinking in the pass game, you start going to the zone protections where you just try to not leave gaps open. Trevor Rulin comes out at left guard. Aaron Banks goes in in his place. It's a run for Williams there, three yards into Pittsburgh territory, and it'll be a first down for the Irish. There's Chip Long, and he is uh, so excited about what the offense had been doing the last few games because the ball's being spread. Williams has given him a home run hitter. Uh, that's the rare half we've seen in the year and a half that Chip Long's been the Irish offensive coordinator. There's no rhythm got going. Book getting to the edge. Fans wanted to flag the Pittsburgh fans. Don't get it. And the pass is complete to Chase Claypool on the sides of the 40 yard line, a couple shy of the first down. So you're going to move the pocket to avoid the pass rush as much as possible, but it's still nothing in rhythm. There's the block you were talking about. Something opens up late on the sideline for him. He hangs in there, but it's still not clean and smooth offense. But at least by moving the pocket, you avoid the exotic blitz. Alizé Mack, the tight end, was out there blocking on an island a bit on that pressure. Here's Williams with a run. And Notre Dame's picked up three first downs here quickly on this drive at the 36-yard line. The easiest way to alleviate pass rush is running the football. Find ways to run the football. Another Pittsburgh line change, like the Penguins. They take four off, bring four on. None of them named Crosby. From the 36, pass complete by Book. It'll gain seven to Miles Boykin, his second catch of the day. Chase Pine, tackle for the Panthers. Boy, they dialed up another corner blitz coming off the weak side. Watch as Dexter Williams releases right past it. He snaps his head around and looks for the ball, but the other throw was already there. Now Williams running to the right. It'll be a yard, maybe a yard and a half shot of that first down. It'll set up third and short. So key for Notre Dame to, to get third manageable situations so you don't have to deal with all the exotic blitzes. One on one up top. Third and two. They're going to run it with Williams. He made the first man miss and he gets a first down. Pittsburgh's getting very good penetration. It's the Irish backfield ruining any timing for backs or quarterbacks. But the chains move on a tough few yards from number two, Williams. 
It's going to be one of those kind of nasty games inside. Pittsburgh's been tough in their defensive line with the penetration, with the blitzes getting into the backfield. From the 24, Ian Book taking a shot. And they're intercepted. Something happened on the way out with that one. Jazzy Stocker comes up with it for the Panthers. And Fink tackles him from behind at the 22-yard line. Don't know if somebody got to his arm on the way, but Book certainly lost the handle on that and Stocker comes up with the Panthers second turnover of the game it was the pressure up the middle by Jalen Twyman the pressure forced it Stocker the pick Panthers up eight with the ball and feeling a lot of momentum no you jump offside unforced error that's a turnover Pressure on the quarterback, Ian Book uncertain in what he's seeing, pass pressure all day long, whether it's from blitzes or just defensive linemen beating him, and then turning the ball over on the move. This is going to be a touchdown pass. He has the post for a touchdown. Twyman, the freshman, penetrates, gets a piece of the arm. The defensive front for Pittsburgh is taking it to the Notre Dame offensive line. And Jesse Stocker comes up with his first career pick, and the Panthers will take over now at their own 22-yard line. For first drive for Pittsburgh of this second half, and Julian O'Quara throws back Quadri Olison, the running back, after a game of just two. Pittsburgh scored on the kickoff return to start this half. Their prior three drives in the first half ended with three and outs. So after a first drive of 17 plays, 88 yards, 10 minutes, and a touchdown, Pittsburgh's done nothing offensively since then. And the Irish defense, the way the offense is playing, can't afford to let the Panthers do anything. Kenny Pickett, the sophomore who grew up a Notre Dame fan, here in South Bend, on a slant, on target. It's Aaron Matthews for the first down in front of Dante Vaughn, out to the 38-yard line, a gain of 14. Matthews on Vaughn, nice stick. The ball is perfectly placed and thrown in rhythm off the play-action fake. Sees the little window up, ball's gone. Nice timing on the throw. And, and that's the type of throw they're gonna ask. They're not gonna ask him to go win the game with his arm. They're gonna run the football and convert. Saw this often in the first half, in the second half last week. The Wildcat formation, direct snap. Back to the Richard senior from Niagara Falls. Olison, they gave only two yards. Tavon Coney. On the tackle, Olsen's had an interesting time. You know James Conner if you watch pro football. He's the terrific running back for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Well, when he was injured, injured his ACL, and then subsequently in the medical diagnosis of that, they ended up finding that he had non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. The running back who took his place at Pittsburgh was that man, Olsen. In the game where Conner got hurt, Olsen had 207 yards, went on to be the ACC Rookie of the Year. Connor came back, was a great player in his last year for Pittsburgh. Olsen took a back seat, was a fullback last year. This year, he is the number one back. He's getting the job done. Here he is out of the backfield. For a gain of five, you see some of his strength, Doug. He gets better as the game goes on. He and Aloe Gilman yapping at each other here before third down comes up. Just keep fighting. That was well defended. Defenders right there. He still fights off three to four tacklers. Gilman's been a tough guy all year long coming up and filling from the secondary. He's been a pleasant surprise for Notre Dame in the secondary. But Olsen's a tough runner with the ball. Used out of the backfield there. A lot of pressure on Notre Dame defense to get off the field and give their offense opportunities. Notre Dame brings in the pass rushing group because of the formation and the personnel from the Panthers. Third and three. Pick it with time over the middle again. They're working on Vaughn on those slants. And again, it is Matthews using that six foot four big frame. And two catches all year has two catches on this drop. Again. Coming from left to right, all you have to do is get inside leverage on a slant route, and you are open. It's an easy throw. It's right in front of you. That's all he has to do is get across Vaughn's face. Matthews right in the chest from Pickett. Vaughn just stopped. He's lucky that Gilman was there, there to clean, to clean, up clean it tackle. up. Yeah. A nickel corner position has been a place of concern for the Irish thus far. Wildcat snap to Darren Hall. Aquarius everywhere. Julian Aquarius is having a great season for Notre Dame. Limits the game there. Maybe a half yard. 
And again, Bond going back to the other play. Bond's in because Troy Pride, yes. normal starting corner, is out. And they have attacked. And they've used the six foot four Matthews on this drive on the same play twice. Vaughn a junior from Memphis. Of course, the Irish lost Sean Crawford to an ACL back earlier in the season. So second and ten for Kenny Pickett, and we've got a flag. Ball start, number 78, out there. Keep an eye when Pittsburgh comes back on offense, on defense, I should say, as the, the foul here is on the right tackle, Alex Bookser. DeMar Hamlin, the free safety, number three, just went back to the locker room with an athletic trainer. He's a big part of what they do defensively, so we'll see if he comes back. He was running back there with the trainer, so. Seventy first meeting between these teams and another good one screen set up for Hall. Kurt Heinrich from Pittsburgh's chasing. Bringing him down to the edge is Tariq Gracie, the freshman from California. It'll be a gain of about a yard two. And attack. All these are safe pass plays for Pickett. You, know, you don't want to put him in a position where he's reading the entire field, holding the football with a good Notre Dame pass rush. And because they're able to run the ball, keep him in a good down and distance, he hadn't been able to do that, or had to do that. Now third and 11, the test is on. Tillery held in check in terms of sacks. Second in the country coming in with seven on the year. Good job as he's double teamed here. Shovel ahead. Hall brought it in. Got the first down. That's Kenny Pickett. There's a little bit of grit to him, a little bit of confidence, a little bit of gutsiness. He shoveled it forward for 16, a chain mover. Well, he gets his own coverage, everyone bailing out. Nothing is there initially as he steps up through. The back's going to release and no one's covering the back. Great reaction. He felt Tavon Coney come up to attack the quarterback position. This is basketball. Bring your defender to you, flip it to the other guy. Great job, great reaction by Hall to catch the ball and get a first down. He just sends building confidence from Pittsburgh. Tight formation. See if they take a shot here from the 30. Well, keep handing it off. Olison, Jason Adiamola. One of the two freshman twins from Jackson, New Jersey. Jason and Justin. And it was a stop. You know, it was negative gain or no gain at all. But the clock continues to run. Yeah, the game right. shortens. You're getting towards the end of the third quarter. Doug, what was that other drive? 10 minutes and 10 seconds in the first quarter. And that's in the beginning of the game when you're on offense waiting to get the ball. And here's this one. Six minutes, their first full drive of this second half. They started the half with a kickoff return for touchdown. They get out of the backfield. Quadri Olison made one man miss, but he stepped out of bounds after Julian Love hit him first. Julian Love's all over it as usual. So here comes another key third down. Panthers have converted a couple here. They've converted third and 11 and third and four on this drive already. Love did a nice job of reading that, you know, playing off his receiver, seeing the back on the swing. The long yardage situations, not the forte, but he made a play last time, so let's see if Pickett can do it again. If you're Pickett, don't take a sack here. Field goal will be 47 yards. Kickers made two from 50 plus last week. Third and eight. Pressure coming. Got away from McQuarrie. Throws on the run. Incomplete. Julian Love blanketing the coverage on Shockey Jack Louis. And we'll have the long field goal attempts coming. Love chased him all the way across the field. Tavon Coney, exceptional job at chasing the quarterback. Pickett out of the pocket. Pickett gets the outside, but he's mirroring him. Gets in the lane. And then Julian Love playing the ball in the air. It's another pass breakup. He's terrific. All time Notre Dame leader in pass breakups. That's his 35th. Alex Kessman. Well, he's not seeing Syracuse. Against Syracuse, he has 54, 55, and 56 yard field goals in his career. This is from 47. Didn't hit it great and missed it. Just came out knuckling. A little bit of that quick hook. Missed it to the left. Irish dodge a bullet. A third of the game left. Number five, undefeated Notre Dame is down eight. Could have been double digits for the first time this year. 
for Kesman Biston. Geico, 15 minutes could save you 15% on car insurance. By Coca-Cola, taste the feeling. By Mercedes-Benz, the best or nothing. And by PNC, make today the day. Many coaches in this rivalry, national championship winners over the years. Ryan Kelly trying to get his team back to the playoff would be now, not the national championship, expands to four. Irish got a lot of work to do here. Ian Book begins a slap, homecoming, or rather Chase Claypool, excuse me, middle of the field to midfield, first down. Dane Jackson the tackle again at 21, and a step away from going all the way. That's the way it feels. It's going to have to be big play. Someone's going to break into the secondary and take off. It's hard to put plays back, back, back to back. 21 on that one, setting up the screen for Williams. What a play! Fabulous by Jackson, the corner. He smelled it. He saw it. He shut it down. Dane Jackson coming from the outside. The lineman pulling out on the screen can't find him. That's Kramer. Doesn't get there in time. Dane Jackson, great reaction. You, you're not going to beat the big man's block, so you got to do it with speed. Book will keep on the zone read. Get into the. Panthers territory at the 43. We saw that flag fly through. We'll check the call. Holding. Number 57. Offense. 10 yard penalty. Second down. And it's on that left guard, Trevor Rulin. We've been talking about that left guard spot after the loss of Alex Bars. Seen Aaron Banks in there a bit. Have to hold a Shane Roy 93 kind of stands him up. You can't see the hold from this angle, but he, he stands up. He's got the arm on the outside. He's got it on the outside of the shoulder initially, but just turn him. Official may have reacted to the reaction by the defender as opposed to the pull there. It's second at 18. Book retreating, firing, coughing. Out of bounds, 35. Get a 17. First down. In front of Jazzy Stocker. Just a great job of delivering a shot. Here's your slot receiver on the corner route, thick. And the ball, oh, nice double move. It takes a little time, and Ian Book was patient in the pocket, drifted, and fell away on this throw, and delivered a strike. 35, quick toss to the end track, and Tony Jones Jr. out there. He crumples down after taking a big hit. Phil Campbell, the third, limits the game. I think Ian Book's going to have to do that a little more, hanging in there and not leaving the pocket. Drift just a little and keep your focus on that receiver. Because guys are coming open. They're coming open late. It's not happening in rhythm like he's accustomed to. You see those uh, rushing numbers. The longest run by an Irish running back is seven by Jones. Book pumps. Didn't see the first one. Fink was the outlet. Takes a loss of yards to a gain of two. And it'll bring up third in about a half dozen. All right, you can't teach this. This is ridiculous. He had his focus downfield. He wants to throw the ball down the field, decides not to, and as he's falling backwards, just throws it out, knowing, knowing his receiver was out in the flat. Without lets him no look pass. There's Magic Johnson. <laughs> Patrick Mahomes, who we're gonna see on Sunday night football tomorrow, does that a lot. They, they kind of look the other way, fire with that rocket arm. Third down. Here is Book throwing complete. And two receivers in the area. Claypool getting in the way. Fink getting the catch. Gain of 15 to the 15. First down, Notre Dame. Go to the guys you trust. I mean, Fink beats him on the corner route, takes the ball on the flat. Now he's going to come into motion and run a little pivot route. Start out and back under. Kind of a little screen play by Claypool. Ian Book's finding the guy he's trusting right now. Market at the 16. We get towards two minutes here. Third quarter. Irish down eight. Book. Claypool. Slash. Touchdown Notre Dame for the first time today. They'll go for two in the top. Little change released by the receivers and he slips underneath. They've done a good job on the last three plays of switching. Watch him come underneath. It forces the DBs to try to switch something on the fly. And that's a third straight play where receivers come wide open on that. Tonight's yeah, adjustment release. by Chip Long to try to slow down some of those corner blitzes and that action. 
cause traffic amongst the DBs. Irish have gone for two once this year, did not convert it. Big receiver Boykin in motion. But going that way. Boykin couldn't hang on. And Pittsburgh remains on top by two. Boykin couldn't bring it in. His receiving partner Chase Claypool did for his third touchdown of the season. His third touchdown in the last four games. Irish score a touchdown for the first time today. Two left in the third, and the margin is two. Got to wait for Carrie Underwood to say game on. What a game! Chiefs and Patriots. Patrick Mahomes and the undefeated Chiefs go up and see. Tommy and the guys in Foxborough. Football Night in America to get you started 7 Eastern, 8.20 kickoff without Chris and Michelle. Sunday Night Football, a beauty on NBC. Book hit all six passes on that drive. Justin Yoon is kicking off again. After Doors kickoff turned into a touchdown, and Yoon hits a line drive that French will not get his hands on. It'll be a touchback. And Pittsburgh will take over the 25. 209 to go here in the third. Against the Blackhawks on NBC on New Year's Day. Justin Yoon, the Irish all time league scorer, the kicker. He kicked off there and watch him as he comes across this. You'll see him grimace a little bit. As I watched him come over the sideline, he was limping a little. We'll keep an eye on the kicker. This is a catch to the sidelines by Rafael Arujo Lopes. And he'll gain nine to the 34 yard line. Well, this Notre Dame defense has done a great job of getting off the field after that first drive, first quarter. We've been handing the ball back to the offense till the offense finally gained some rhythm. So again, just big opportunities. To pick, pick, control the clock, and work it down to the end of the third quarter. Pittsburgh team that is three and three on the year. Lost to Penn State, North Carolina, Central Florida. Up the middle, wide open for Olison. Quadri Olison gets a first down into Irish territory. Well, they'll mark him right at midfield. It's a gain of 17. It's the best run they've had in a while for the Panthers, and Olison is coming off. His 14th carry of the day, still under 50 yards. Well, that's a great answer for Pitt for, for the Notre Dame touchdown to close the gap to be able to come back and finally start to move the football. You lose Olison, but you don't lose much for the moment as Darren Hall out of Youngstown, Ohio, checks in, averaging six and a half to carry on the season. Final minute of the third. Here is Hall. He gets a nice opening there on the right side of that offensive line. A gain of six. This Pittsburgh offensive line has done quite well here on these three drives starting the first half the second half and here 78 books are at right tackle here he's on his block this time but the play before as well he sealed he came up up, up onto the linebacker level they're doing a great job the last two plays of getting to a second level you know the combo block at the line of scrimmage sealing off a linebacker now Lebanon high school 30 second start you see those five there the center Morris he's a sophomore the other four have their Degree their undergraduate degrees, all taking grad classes now. That's the fullback George Aston for the first down run. Lowy Gilman backs down from no confrontation that includes a conversation. And that's going to take us to the fourth quarter. Notre Dame, all the talk of what's going to happen, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. It's Pittsburgh putting the pressure on the Irish again. After three, it's the Panthers 14. Undefeated Notre Dame 12. We're back in Notre Dame Stadium after these messages from your local station. Good one going. You're watching Notre Dame football on NBC. By two, want to send along our best to Lou Holtz, championship coach of the Irish. That statue out there. Coach was in a minor car accident this week. He's doing okay. He's at home. You know his wife Beth has been in poor health. Coach, just want to send you our best. Let you know that we're thinking and praying for you and Beth. And that comes from all the Notre Dame fans and the folks here in South Bay. Last championship winning coach here at Notre Dame 30 years ago. Irish trying to get themselves in position to play for another title. 
They got a fourth quarter to handle here. Pittsburgh trying to do some trickery. French picked up the fumbled handoff and will be stopped for a loss of about a yard and a half. So they're trying to get some trickery. And they almost tricked themselves into trouble. Well, it looks like Olsen was anticipating French to go over the top, and French went underneath. Lucky bounce of the ball. They fumbled the jet sweep away. last week against Syracuse, trying to get into Shocky Jock Louis. They've done just fine keeping it straightforward. I mean, Keep it simple. <laughs> you may want to put, put the trick somewhere else. The clock is stopped here for a moment. Previous play is under further review. Could it be an incomplete pass because it was forward? I thought he handed it right to Olsen. Was anyone's knee down in the process of the play going to pick it up? I don't think so. Let's see. It was definitely a pitch to Olsen. If it's a pitch forward, it no, no, it's, it's a pitch back. That's why. But right that, there. Is that a pass or is that a fumble? fumble right? Well, Terry McCauley's here, so I'm not going to guess. Terry? <laughs> well, if, if he releases the ball and there's air, then it does become a forward pass. If, if it's a hand to hand if there's contact by both players at the same time that's that's a hand to hand and it's a fumble but if there's air if you release okay. the ball forward intentional movement forward starts a forward pass just a bit and it looks like he releases the ball it's it's, it's See, so you, you say that and I got what you're saying no. is anybody on the planet going to tell me that that would have been a completion by Olison on a pass. <laughs> I don't, think the, I, don't think the, I don't think the stats people would have done that. No, <laughs> that would, they're going to make that. A, they're going to make that a handoff. That, 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 that's where that's where stupidity has gotten into football, folks. <laughs> I mean, you know, that, that, that's a reverse as long as we've been watching football. But you're right. All these touch passes now that come right. just because it's not the quarterback. It's a it's a loss of maybe a you know, yard and, and a and half. And Doug makes play. a great point there. I mean, you're talking about one yard here. We're stopping the game for one yard. Exactly, because the incomplete pass would take it back to second and 10 at the 40 as opposed to second and 11 at the 41. If indeed that's what we're talking about on the field. Right, at the 39, I beg your pardon. I could see if Notre Dame scooped that thing up and started going the other way, I'd, I'd sure. lobby for my incomplete pass and get it back to the line of scrimmage. This, this play has no competitive effect. I mean, is there anything the else we're missing, though? No, I, I don't think so. And, and that, that is a fascinating Ruling aspect. On the field, the complete forward pass. It'll be second down and 10 at the 39 yard line. Please put 14 56 on the clock. That's, that's the one effect of the game there. It's the 32 seconds again. Credit to Larry Malman, the re replay official, for stopping the game to look at that. But it's the explanation coming from Pat Narduzzi here. Direct snap back to Quadri Olus as this one gets going. What have we done to football, folks? Second and ten. Olson keeping. Tavon Cooney will join Julian Aquara and Lowy Gilman on the tackle. It's third down coming up. We do remember the 36 extra seconds that didn't run off the clock. That could factor in later on for either team. Well, you go from a formation that you had three offensive linemen on the right side, a couple extra tight ends, and definitely running the ball up there with your fullback to spread it out a little bit on third down. Will Bragg, the tight end, who's played very little, is in the game. Pickett's going to take the deep shot downfield for French, who's hit by Love and flat for pass interference. Julian Love got those arms. That was a good call. And it'll be 15 yards and take Pittsburgh down to the 23. Defense, number 27, 15 yard penalty. Automatic first down. I mean, this is where Pickett's going to go with the ball from the beginning. It's one on one on the outside. He got a great release. French had a step, but Julian Love recovered and got back in position. Didn't have to. Was anticipating the ball being there a half a fraction of a second earlier. He's expecting the ball right now, and he starts to go for it. Now the ball shows up, so the interference happens. And the official in the middle of the field in the end zone through that. He's the one who clearly saw Love's left arm. He'll strip the left arm of the receiver French to go get it. 
from the 23. Here is Olsen, and here's the return flag. That'll send the Panthers back 10. Holding, holding. Number 78, 78. offense. 10 yard penalty. Repeat first down. Bookser just throws Julian Acquire to the ground. Little reach with the left. Out here at right tackle. Gets the left hand underneath and the right hand behind the back and throws him to the ground. Really? You think That's it was just clear? a push by. Oh. I'm being told it was just a push by. It's, I don't know. That looked like a pull and a throw. Pittsburgh fans have the right to rumble about that one. First and 20 back in the 33. Pickett in trouble, scrambling. Pickett going to turn it upfield. They got away from the Pittsburgh native Heinisch. Umpire gets in the way of the would-be tackle. Gets to the sideline of the 25-yard line. Pushed by Bracy, and no call is made. Could have been a disaster. Turns into a gain of eight. He's a gritty kid. You know, when he gets out on the perimeter, okay, he doesn't like what he sees. He starts to move. He gets out to the right. I'm thinking, don't make a mistake. Be careful with the ball. He does exactly that. Tucks it under and turns into a running back. Umpires couldn't get out of the way of Jalen Elliott with bodies going in every different direction. Nice oh, pick. Yeah. That a boy, Mike. Way to throw a block. Terrence Ramsey, the umpire, he, he he was just caught up in a play that started on the left, went to the right, came back his way. Second and a dozen. Pickett trying to set up a screen. It's not there. So he's going to run and just get out of bounds. Third and long coming up. Game's getting tight. Game's getting late. Shadows are growing. Everybody's uptight with each call. Good. All of a sudden, really game. couldn't get out. Yeah, they really get out. Look at, look at the hole that was missed here. Right tackle. Little, there's a little left hand pull down throw. But all of a sudden, got held up by Bonner. All right, 25 yard line. Set the stage, coach. You got third and a dozen coming up. Field goal from here is 43 yards. Four men, Notre Dame rush. Got rid of it quick. The tight end, Greg, caught it. He's taken it at the 18 yard line. And that'll make it a closer field goal of 36 yards or 35, depending on the spot. Shout out into Pittsburgh player number two. Yeah, definitely a play call to set up the field goal to gain extra yardage to get the field goal a little closer and to extend the lead to put touchdown pressure on Notre Dame. Maurice French is the player who they stopped the game for the moment for. He goes over to the sideline. They'll wind the clock as Alex Kessman gets set for another one. From 36, he missed a 47 earlier. He missed that one to the right. Alex Kessman, who hit two bombs last week of 54 and 55 in the win over Syracuse, has missed from 47. He's missed from 36. And it's a two point game. Three minutes into the fourth. And by Jeep. Temperature in the upper 40s. Midterm is just done here in South Bend. Been a busy week for the students. One of the football players said it was a 2, 3 a.m. this week studying. Coming off the late night arrival at about 4 a.m. on Sunday morning after the evening victory in Blacksburg. You know, we're trying to pull it together to keep the undefeated season alive. Irish down two. Fake on the reverse. Commit the tight end. Face mask. Take him to the 29. And they throw the flag. There it is. He'll take it out to the 44 yard line. Sean Idowu. Guilty. Coach McLeod, face mask, number 23, defense, 15 yard penalty, automatic first down. There's a look at the face mask, but a great play call to be a drive starter by Chip Long to come out after. Then they want to go no huddle like they did last drive, create some tempo. So Pittsburgh's defense defense can't get into the exotic blitzes. However, the penalty slows things down. Good pickup, and Chris Sims mentioned that at halftime that no huddle would take some of the creativity out of this defense. Williams to the short side, and 
Well, the man holding the uh, down marker on that side got rolled up on two. So did a Pittsburgh player, Rasheed Wheeler. We got a couple of folks over Time there. Out. Injured Pittsburgh player. In the back of nose tackle from last year, Wheeler, a terrific hustler on this team. He's over there. Unfortunately, the gentleman who's holding the down marker on the side has gotten up. Wheeler coming over to the bench as well. Wheeler went to Pittsburgh Central Catholic High School. That's right almost on the heart of the Pitt campus there in Oakland. It's about a, a half, half mile from the, the centerpiece of campus. Kirk Heinisch, who we've talked about from Notre Dame, their defensive tackle, went to school there. As a matter of fact, uh, Heinisch was teammates with Wheeler and, and a couple other players on this Pittsburgh team as well. The snapper on field goals and kicks, Cal Adamitis. Bryson Garner as well. There's Heinisch. We talked to him yesterday. It's such a big game for him. Big game for his parents, mom and dad. And they make the trip so often, but this is a special one for them. He said that dad, dad's a survivor. Dad, dad has uh, installed some of that grit that he had growing up uh, in, in his son, and you see that in the play from number 41, who's been uh, a big part of Notre Dame's defensive line rotation this year. Pittsburgh uh, did not ask him to come play football there. Book on the slant, Claypool on the catch. In the traffic, chases right around midfield. It'll be third down coming up. They're getting a lot of use out of the change release by receivers to open someone up quickly and try to create tempo. Get back over the ball. Don't let Pittsburgh line up and get into their exotic blitzes. But that change release opens a receiver right now, and Book's getting the ball out quickly. This is third and four, and Book is going to throw it. It is caught, but Matt cannot shake free of Dennis Briggs. And it'll be fourth down at the 49-yard line. I think Notre Dame might think about going for it here. It's fourth and two at the 49 of the Panthers, and the Irish offense will stay out on the field. This Fink comes in for Notre Dame. I'd look for Fink cutting up underneath a clay pool and maybe pivoting back out or continuing across this, the field. DeMar Hamlin, the safety, was out on the last drive. The All-ACC player this past week is back in on this uh, drive, this big fourth down. Time out. Pittsburgh. Pat Narduzzi First sees their names. They're faking it. They're going for it. And One minute timeout. Time out. Well, welcome those of you who are watching that Georgia game. Georgia, one of those unbeaten in college football, trailing LSU at the half 16 to nothing. Here it is Notre Dame in the same kind of boat. They trail Pittsburgh 14 12, have not led in this game. Pat Narduzzi and Pittsburgh have come back in this game to do what Pittsburgh always seems to do here in South Bend. Three touchdown underdog here. It's been like that before. They come in and play Notre Dame great games over the years. They're playing their best football. Last week led up a mess of points to Syracuse. Today, confusing Ian Book, giving them looks, playing tough defense, getting after the passer. And then on offense, ran the ball well early, but have struggled on offensive late. But they always come in here and give them fits. Notre Dame lined up to go for it on fourth and two, brought the offense out there. Now they bring out the punting unit after Pat Narduzzi took the timeout. So they're trying to pin, pin them back with the Tyler Newsom punt. Both of his punts today have dropped inside the 20. This is super high and does not take the bounce. It goes all the way. So the net is only 29 yards. Important game in the National College Football Playoff picture here in South Bend with ten and a half to go in the fourth. Pittsburgh's got the ball. They've got a two-point lead. Upset in Panther history. The longtime voice of the Panthers, Bill Hillgrove, is voice on some of the great upsets Pittsburgh's had in the last two years. Trying to add to that here today. Kenny Pickett's pass complete. And Rafael Arujo Lopes is out of bounds at the 28-yard line. Time for the quarterback comparison brought to you by Volkswagen. Pickett, 16 of 21. Eight rushing yards. Ian Book, high percentage completions again, but it's been a struggle, especially in the first half. He's thrown two interceptions. and only thrown one in the first three games he became the starter. Pittsburgh's defense has given him fits. Meantime, Pickett is 9 for 10 in the second half. 
the middle. Darren Hall across the 40 into the 44 yard line. Pittsburgh took over the game last week with physical running and an offensive line paving the way. Pat Narduzzi would love to see that here. In the last two possessions, the offensive line has been able to move, create creases, hold on to possession of the ball. They, unfortunately for Pittsburgh, they finished in zero points with two missed field goals, but they began to possess the ball again and move it. The wide receiver screens have happened on first down, big gains, eight yards to set up short yardage situations. That 17-yard run, Doug, was the longest play of the day for Pittsburgh. Up two, nine and a half to go. This is Hall again. He'll go inside for four yards to the 49-yard line. Doug, to your point about the missed field goals, it still had an effect of keeping the ball away from Notre Dame. 22 plays, 106 yards on the last two drives. So the Panthers have eaten 11 now, 12 and a half minutes of clock time even though they don't have a score to show for it on offense. And if this drive resembles either one of those drives, Notre Dame will have one shot with the ball. Could be one drive, that's right. You start thinking about that now, it's a great point. Under nine. Second and six. Throwing it to Arujo Lopes. And he'll work the sidelines, set up third and short. Tariq Gracie in on the tackle. And again, Pittsburgh has kept the game manageable. This was the game plan coming in. Run the ball, keep it away from Notre Dame. Ten minute drive in the first quarter. Get a big play. They had a 99 yard kickoff return to start the second half. They've done everything they've needed to. Now can they close the deal and knock off a top five team for the third time in the last three years. Third and three, they go shotgun here. Let's see if they throw. And the Irish can bring pressure. They bring six. Hall releases in the open field. Play made by Oquara. Julian Oquara, the defensive end, who has dropped multiple times this year, comes up with the big tackle, and the Panthers will punch it away. Oquara drops from the end position, and Gilman is blitzing from inside. He's coming inside, and he's going to drop out in coverage. And pick up the back. Now you're in open space with a tailback. Making the play in space. Great tackle in open field. We've talked about the smoke and mirrors shown by the Pittsburgh defense. So effective in their pressures. Credit Clark Lee there. Play clock runs down. Kirk, Chris Dudu will kick it to Chris Fink. Try to force a long field for the Irish. The Australian nails it. Too far. So that one will net 30. The Irish will get it at the 20. Halfway through the fourth. Pressure building in South Bend. Jackson coming off the weak side. This is very difficult to see because the only way to see this is when the safety is moving wider than he usually does. Books looking left. You don't see the corner blitz come from the weak side. Exotic blitzes all day long out of the secondary have confused the Notre Dame offense. An Irish offense that gets its ninth drive of the game. The first eight have resulted in one touchdown. From the 20, Ian Book. Rosen, shot play, downfield, play pool. Flat. Almost made the catch as well. Dane Jackson in coverage. 15 yard advance to the 35. Looks like it was just a little bit. Defense, defense, number 11, 15 yard penalty, automatic first down. And the left arm wrapping around when they start to play the ball down the field. There's a little tug, and then the left arm there on the left arm of Claypool. But that's a shot play from the get go. Ian Book pulling up, waiting for that backside post, and just airing it out. It was a, actually a great throw and very good coverage on the play. So at 15, here is William, bounces to the outside. Dexter Williams, game of 13, first down, 48-yard line. Biggest run by a Notre Dame running back today. Phil Campbell, the third, the safety, showed him the sideline. Little slide step and very patient. Unblocked defender in the hole, skip to the outside and get the corner. Great job by Boykin downfield, staying on his block. See if they keep running it to the boundary, to that near side. Williams again. He's going to gain two just across midfield, under seven minutes to go. I mean, all day, that's the aspect of the Notre Dame offense that has been really missing, has been the run game. If they could just, the, the two creases mostly were on zone read type of run. Six 
and a half to go. Hook pulls it, keeps it, and through the middle is just not much there. Pittsburgh's been bringing a lot of bodies to the right spots. Wyman and Hamlin both have made big plays in this game, made the top stop there. And four. from the 47, here comes third and five, Doug. Four down territory now? I, I, I would so. believe yeah. so. Again, I like to think on little pivot routes, change release where you come off someone else underneath the receiver. Well, now is a Mac a lot in these short situations. Fink is in the slot at the bottom. Pressure comes. Book throws. It's caught by Boykin at the 35 yard line. First down from Miles in front of Jason Pinnock. This time, Pinnock, he's been playing it tight, but this time bails a little quicker, so it is a rhythm throw. 50 to go. Field goal gives the Irish the lead. Book wants it up. Go in end zone. It is caught. Boykin. Touchdown, Notre Dame. Little bit of a play action fake which holds the safety so the safety's not involved the Boykin got a great inside relief release a perfect throw over the top he gets grabbed and pulled right here as he's pulling away a little tug closes the cushion but the ball is perfect fascinating choice here up four the two-point chart tells you to go for two make it a six-point game the Irish will go for one Yoon adds the extra point and the lead is five some folks do think that in a four point, since they put the two point defensive in there in college football, if you block it and take it back the other way, then a field goal wins. That's why sometimes you go against the chart. Big touchdown by Boykin, his fourth of the year. The Irish respond with the season on the line. And for the first time today, Notre Dame leads. Our playoffs, the Monster Energy Cup Series continues in Talladega. Man, what a place that is. Always gives you great race, and we'll have it for you tomorrow right here on NBC at 2 Eastern Time. The next week, they go to Kansas. Next Sunday night, football's in Kansas City, so it's a big weekend in Kansas next week. Chase Elliott got that win last week. Dover, so he's on top of these playoff standings. The line is drawn at 8 after this week and next. You may have tweaked that groin as we told you earlier. So Dorr is kicking off again, and this one's a touchback. So the return will come from the 25-yard line. He will be well received. Under pressure, Jonathan Dorr came up with a big one. Well, it could have been a tie game after the Irish scored the touchdown in the third quarter. Ian Book's pass to Miles Boykin was just away from those outstretched arms. But Boykin comes up with the redemption as these two perfectly connect. On this touchdown pass to give Notre Dame a five point lead with 5.43 to go. The senior comes through. Now the Irish defense, which has only given up seven points today, the other seven on a kickoff return. Can they answer the call? They do on the first play. Through Tranquil stops Quadri Olison. Maybe a half yard. No more. It's a condensed set. Primarily look like a run set. Pitt is not an air it out football team. And they're getting into that situation where they may not be able to go three yards in a cloud of dust all the way up the field. Welcome to those of you watching Washington, Oregon. All seven teams on the board at auction at the break out there. Dandy of a finish here at South Bend. The Irish trailed till just a moment ago. Now up five with five to go. Pittsburgh a three touchdown dog trying to pull the upset. Here is Pickett. Over the middle, it's caught. Hard hit, but hung on to by Aaron Matthews, who's had a big game today. Great throw by Pickett. Really good job of Matthews hanging on this ball, waiting for him to come into a window right in here. He's going to wait patiently. Here comes Bang. Perfect rhythm timing, feels that zone. That's a nice completion. Pickett looked good out of the pocket, delivered a strike. He's going to have to do that a little bit this drive. He's been good all half. The kid who grew up idolizing Brady Quinn watching Notre Dame football. His dogs are named Brady and Quinn. Trying to come up with a moment of a lifetime here in South Bend. Gives to Hall. A play adjusted at the line of scrimmage by the quarterback. Picked the right one to gain him a half dozen. We've got 423 to go.
Pat Narduzzi was furious with the officials uh, while we were away in break. That pass interference call got that drive started. Meantime, Notre Dame's offensive uh, defensive line, I should say, has to try to hold up here. We get 41 with the blue and gold to the Irish. Kurt Heinisch, guy who grew up, going to high school a half mile away from Pitt's campus. Pickett, boot, chased by Kareem, throws across the back lane, and it is incomplete. Elliott might have dug it off the ground to keep it alive, and he and Tavon Coney could not get it. Third down coming up. Risky throw. I mean, Pickett's moving to his right. He really doesn't have anything. This is one he should throw away. And Elliott just comes charging from his safety position to get to this. I mean, he came 15 yards downhill to cut in front of a tight end on a crossing route, and it, it almost stayed alive for Coney. That's an exceptional break from where he was. They were very close. Loud as it's been all day. Third and four. Olsen's the back. Pick at the throw. Incomplete. What does Narduzzi do? They want a flag. They're screaming for one on the Pittsburgh side. You've got to make a decision here, coach. You've got to gather yourself. Are you going to go for it or what? Fourth and four. You're on 45. 342 to go. Two timeouts. Gonna punch it away. Gilman's pulling him. Yeah, he got a little tug. Got a little tug. I would have been looking to get the ball in French's hands any way you can. A guy that Jack that can go the distance with French and the, the wide receiver screens, the little pivot route. Notre Dame jumped offside earlier on the same situation, fourth and four. It's gonna be a fake. It's Chris Dulu, the Aussie. He's looking. He's scrambling. He throws incomplete on the sideline. Nothing doing. Irish kept their defense out there and they were ready for it. And that's one of the reasons they didn't put Chris Dulu out there. Put the other kicker out there. So they went to everything possible in the book of tricks. Well, that's your recognition factor of knowing who's on the field. In, in this situation, you've got your defense on the field. Everything is good. He didn't have any options. Fascinating at 96. With the throw, so well disciplined. Chris Maloney is the only 96 listed, a backup defensive lineman. That was a guy with no name on his jersey. Irish take over at the 45 yard line. 334 to go. It's a toss to Williams to the right, got to stay in bounds. He does the 41 yard line. Pittsburgh used a timeout earlier, they only have two remaining. So, again, just to clear that up, the only 96 in the Pittsburgh roster. Is Chris Maloney, defensive lineman, a freshman for Fort Washington, Pennsylvania, who was not on the travel roster that the Panthers provided us? So deep in the book of tricks to try to make that if one happen. You're going to do something like that. I prefer, especially in these types of situations, it to be my offense on the field on fourth and four instead of a trick play, fake punt fourth and four. Especially when they go punch safe. They kept their defense on the field, not special teams. I mean, and then once you see it, go ahead and use your timeout and go back to your offense. Book since he threw that pick has been perfect. Another run inside with Williams gains a yard. Pittsburgh takes a timeout with 2:44 to timeout. go. Timeout. Pittsburgh second timeout of the second half. It is not unlike Chip Long to take a shot play in this scenario. Okay, one minute timeout. You can't do it here. But, with, with, but because of Pittsburgh's offense, I believe he'll just milk the clock and punt it away. But. This is normally where he might try something, even if it's a safe way to do it, to look for a big play. I just want to reiterate, Doug, to make sure we're clear. We do the best we can to keep up with the stupidity of double numbers and the chicanery of different numbers in college football. There's no 96 on the Pittsburgh travel roster that they provide. Their, their sports information department with E.J. Borghetti is as good as it gets in the country. They did a great job. So just so you know, it, it was, if it wasn't Chris Tadulu, I'm not exactly sure who it was, but stay tuned. You can find out about that somewhere. There he is. It looks like Chris Tadulu with the whole facial hair. In any case, the unnamed man comes out <laughs> for the magic moment. Yeah. He was on the plane in Manifest. <laughs> All right, third and six coming up here for the Irish. 2.45 to go. It's so totally within the rules. You try to pull all the tricks in the trades. And that down to one time out here for Pittsburgh. Notre Dame. Oh, that was Jeff George Jr. All right, so the third quarterback, Jeff George Jr., whose dad, as you know, was in the NFL for many years. He transferred in here. 
He was at Illinois, earned his undergraduate business degree, went to high school at Warren Central. He's supposed to be number three, he was 96. They're going to throw on third and six. Book is looking. Book's in trouble. He's going to run for it. He's going to be very close. Where's the mark? The mark is shy. The mark looks shy. The clock will run. Fourth down. Fourth down. It's fourth down. Does Pittsburgh want to take a timeout or not? They do. They're all the way out past the numbers to get the timeout. Now Narduzzi wants time back on the clock. He's like, why isn't anybody over there? Because they were out running for the spot. The third and final timeout. We're bringing Terry McCauley as we watch the play. We're going to watch the spot, Terry. Help us on this here. As soon as he breaks down to slide feet first, that's where the ball goes. Where the so ball is short. at that point. At that point, the foremost point of, boy, ball, point of the ball when he breaks down right there. So he's clearly short of the, so you, of the line again. You think it's a good spot? Yes. Let me hit you on the second point, or, or there's more importantly, is there anything there to turn it over? No, right. no, absolutely not. And then putting time back on the clock, that's a tough one for the officials because you're coming in to spot the ball, the officials on that sideline with Narduzzi. Could you use replay to go back and put time on the clock, or it has to be a feel thing on the field? If, if, if there's a shot of him calling timeout and we have the clock, then they can put it back to when he called timeout. The officials did put time back on the clock, so I think Narduzzi satisfied there. That's why it's awesome to have 20-year NFL officials work three Super Bowls and a coordinator of officiating in college game for the last decade up here with us in the booth. Fourth and one, Doug, 230. If you're a national champion caliber team. You're going for it and putting this game away with your offense and not giving the ball away. And if Notre Dame gets this one yard, the game should be over. They only have to take three knees. Rock right is the fullback. Book is rolling. He's looking to throw. He's scrambling. He's not going to get there. Pittsburgh comes up with the play. Chase Pine with the stop. And the Panthers will take over with 236 and out of timeouts. Pine collision Wisher. Nick Wisher is going to release late, would have been open. But Pine coming from here, collisions, and there's nothing left for, for Book to see or throw. It's a great job of keeping contained and making the tack on the open field. And this is Chip Long. Chip likes to go for the big play, whether it was two plays ago when he called a pass play and Ian Book ended up scrambling or on fourth and short, looking for. You know they're selling out to stop the run. I'm going to go with something else. Great job by the pit defense. Phenomenal. Announcement from the official coming up here. To check the time on the clock. They want to check the clock here. When Book went out of bounds, as Brian Kelly talks to me about what did or did not happen in that scenario. So the Irish were one yard away from sealing it. They're going to force Pittsburgh to come down the field here and go 62 yards for a touchdown. That Notre Dame possession ran off just 56 seconds by the use of the Narduzzi timeouts. The Irish had a chance to ice the game. They could not line up and power run it. Look slide there in that situation as opposed to running for that first down. Perhaps the difference in Pittsburgh getting the ball back or not getting the ball back. Definitely Please getting this off. 235. 235. Which is plenty of time in college football with the clock stopping on first downs to be able to move the football. Not a great drop back pass team. Matthews is the route runner in the group. Jacques Louis and French are the guys that in open field on the underneath passes can bust it. Remind you, we've had three different clock resets, including 24 seconds put back at the start of the quarter. Pittsburgh's thrilled to have those now. First and ten for Kenny Pickett. He's got time. Now he doesn't. Kareem's chased him. Kareem spun him. Kareem sacked him. Colin Kareem. Big loss. They lost 14. The clock's running. Right over the left guard, he splits the two as they start to pass off the stunt. Oh. Kareem comes free. Millen and Dentino didn't handle the handoff. Pickett fires, flutters. It is deflected and incomplete. It was fluttering out there. Houston Griffith deflected it, and then the contact came from Bracey. So that's why it's no pass interference. 
the contact with the ball happened first. Julian Acquire on the way on the pass rush got a little deflection as it was released, which creates the flutter. Again, it's pass rush. Kareem, then Acquire, and this could have wound up being an interception. You have to get to the 48. You have two plays to do it. Third and 24. Get it to your athletes underneath and let them run to try to get half of this. Rushing three, dropping eight are the Irish. Pickett's over the line of scrimmage. That's an illegal forward pass. Flag is thrown on the far side. Illegal forward pass, lost it down, plus the yards, fourth down. And the weakness is getting shown right away. Interesting, they're calling false start over there. Formation. Offense, all the four players in the backfield. Penalties declined. Fourth down. Again, that red line is not official. It's going to be somewhat insignificant. It could add five yards. It would be a loss down with it. See, he clearly goes over it and comes back. What is the line judge looking at? He's standing right there. Timeout there today. That line judge is right on the down marker. He doesn't move. Pickett came over and came back. Previous play is Irish. under further review. And upstairs, we'll go get him. We'll clean it up. <laughs> And they bring Terry back in. Go get him, Mike. Terry has no lost it down with lost it down with that. So that would make it with the, the penalty gets added on. So it becomes five yards longer there on the fourth down. All right, let's give you the pulse of this one. The second half started with a Maurice French 99 yard kickoff return. Panthers had a one point halftime lead. They took it to 14 6. They're terrific field goal kicker with 250 yarders last week. Alex Kessman has missed two today. Ian Book, it's been a struggle because of Pittsburgh's confusing defense, but he has hung tough, completed over 70% of his passes again. Since he threw that second interception, Doug, he, he was uh, one stretch 11 of 11. He really has tightened it up. Really responded with upfield throws to a corner route to, to Fink, the touchdown pass to Boykin. Hanging in there and playing tough, like you said. Fourth down, you're playing conservatively defensively, but turn the pass rush loose and get after the quarterback. That's been Pittsburgh's only issue is protecting the quarterback and hanging on to the football. And again, for the moment, it's fourth and 24, but if this penalty gets on and added on, it's fourth and 29. After review, there are two fouls on the play. Illegal formation against the offense, more than four players in the backfield. That penalty's declined. There's an illegal forward pass by number nine on the offense, pass beyond the line of scrimmage. That's a five-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Loss of down. The fourth down. If the spot of the pass was the 25-yard line, the ball will be put at the 20-yard line. So fourth and 28 it will be, needing to get to the 48-yard line. So send four verticals up the seams and just go long and hang on the ball for a while and try to look someone off and throw the other way. Go, go get it. And the Irish just rush three with three artillery and a four. I'm not big on just rushing three because he can hang on to the football and move around and let something develop. I would rather bring five and drop everyone to the sticks. Here's the game, fourth and 29. Still they get pressure. He is flushed, puts it up for grabs. Sideline it is. Caught but out of bounds. Incomplete. And the Irish will survive. Trey Tipton, who's caught two balls all year, was the intended receiver. And Notre Dame's defense has done the job. It'll get the Irish out of this one with a victory. You called it with a three-man rush. Julian Acquire does a spin move, splits two of the offensive linemen coming from our, from our right side here. Spins underneath, splits the two of them, the guard, and it's on. And he's got to get rid of the football and throw it up for grabs. Great effort going up and getting the ball foot out of bounds. So Pittsburgh out of timeouts, and the Irish will just take a knee here and close it out. <laughs> Terrific effort from Pittsburgh. Absolutely. This is what they do when they come here three point games, four point games. Nine of the last 11 have been decided by six or less, and add this one to that list. Notre Dame didn't take a lead until 5.43 left in the game, and then they turned it over to Clark Lee's defense. That's about as much excitement as you'll see out of Clark, right? That's not Clark. <laughs> no way he got excited. Ew. Kurt Heinisch 
<laughs> described him to us as cool, calm, but very direct. Uh, and he is all of that and usually keeps it close to the vest. But the, the defense pulled this one out for Notre Dame. The Irish, as we said, had midterm exams this week off the Virginia Tech game. We will leave it to the talking heads to go through the what if conversation that will pollute the next six weeks in college football. The first set of playoff rankings will come up in two and a half weeks. Notre Dame has the wins over Michigan and the win over Stanford here plus the win of Virginia Tech. Irish fans would be best served rooting for those teams already on the schedule to keep winning because it does look like Notre Dame's going to have a big heavy hitter to knock off. But as we see with Georgia losing by 13 to LSU, we saw it with Auburn today. Nobody knows anything yet. <laughs> Keep surviving, move on to the next week. A win is a win. Irish are off next week and then go to San Diego to play the Naval Academy. A lot of respect there, those two guys. They both spoke very highly of each other during this week. Nineteen fourteen. the final we go downstairs to Catherine coach season on the line you had to battle through a lot of adversity in this one how did you manage to pull off this victory today well I mean look these are going to be tough games and uh, you got to find a way to win and uh, Pittsburgh played well today but we found a way to make a couple of plays in the second half made a couple of throws um, defensively played well all day today we put them in a bad situation with a kickoff return for a touchdown and then kept the drive alive uh, but defensively played well um, again I think it's a good wake up call that you've got to play each and every week we didn't play our best today but found a way to win you didn't take the lead in this game until just about just under six minutes to play in the fourth quarter so what changed from that point on for your team well I mean we turned the ball over twice we got in the red zone kick field goal so we had been moving the ball very effectively but it was turnovers and not executing at the highest level offensively and again I think you know they did a great job of controlling the clock they ran the football we had one possession in the first quarter so again just you know stayed with it kept grinding it out it wasn't our best performance but again you know when you're playing the kind of schedule we do week in and week out you're going to have some of these battles you got to find a way to win all right coach enjoy the bye week next yeah. week thank you mike all right Catherine. then after that bye week for the irish they will go to Northwestern Florida State will come here for the last game. Kenny Pickett who grew up watching games here he almost had a moment to remember forever but uh, his Pittsburgh team should be very proud of what they did three and four on the year as the Irish players settle in for the alma mater. Seventh consecutive sellout here. This is the Irish win 10 in a row at home. Last did that between 2011 and 2013. Tommy Reese, former Notre Dame quarterback, now the quarterback coach here, has a word with Ian Book. And now Ian has a word with Catherine Tappan. Ian, congratulations. That one wasn't an easy one. What did your quarterback coach Tommy Reese just say to you? Uh, he said, you know, you got to win close games like that. And, um, you know, he's just keeping me positive because I was a little bummed for. Not having the best situational awareness and, you know, starting slow, but, uh, you know, I got to find a way to pick up this offense and get it going, um, you know, right when we get the ball in the first quarter. So, you know, we'll take the win. It's huge, but, um, yeah, I just got to find a little, I got to find a way to play a little better. What was so challenging that Pittsburgh was presenting you guys with defensively? Uh, they're a great defense, um, very physical, and, um, you know, they were taking away some throws, and then, you know, I was a little late on some of my reads, so. 
um, you know, that'll hurt. And we got to make those huge plays on third down. So we'll be good, though. And since you took over as starter, you've changed the dynamic a little bit in this offense. You guys have been rolling over the last couple weeks. But what did you learn about yourself in this game today? Uh, whatever the circumstances are, we got to find a way to win. And uh, this isn't pretty, but a win's a win. And uh, we got to move on and uh, get a bye week here and then move on to Navy. So. Ian, thanks so much. Thank you. Mike. Hi, Catherine. Thank you. They go past that sign. And uh, head to the locker room. Victors again, 7 0. But you can just sense from Brian Kelly, from Ian Book, and from the fans. I'm sure Irish fans are watching back home. Where there was confidence building, as you said, three and a half hours ago over there. Now doubt creeps in. Closest win of the year, fewest points scored this year. How do you see Notre Dame now after seven weeks? Well, I think this was a unique defense, and they ran into some struggles and some things Ian Book hadn't seen before. He's still 26 to 32. Right. He's completed his last 10 after the intercept, second interception and found a way. But they know, I think it's a wake up call that you know there's still things to work on, whether it's pass protections or getting the running game cranked up when you have to run the football, things of that nature. Defense played well all day, offense played well when they had to. I just had the pleasure this week to go through the mock selection of what the college football playoff committee of 13 will be doing starting in a couple of weeks and a lot of the conversation becomes about the specifics so if somebody watched the game saw Pittsburgh's defense they'd say that if they didn't see the game it would be a little bit different but there is so much football ahead and I think we're reminded as we are every year this time of year Doug when we start to decide these four teams are going there's so much that happens with 20 21 year old kids this is the hardest sport to forecast other than Alabama. It's the hardest sport to forecast what's going to happen week to week. And as you said midterm week things that are outside of football affecting the kids and how they play in their preparation. It's tough to go 12 straight weeks and win every week and be consistent. And that's the challenge. Brian Kelly said it in the pregame. Yes. Their challenge is consistency. And the challenge now is do it on the road. Let's show you what the Irish have ahead. After the bye week, it's to the road. The Navy game going to be played in San Diego this year. It's Navy's home game. So then they'll come back here. The odometer will click just a little bit to the other side of Lake Michigan to play Northwestern in Evanston. Florida State comes in for the last game here. Syracuse in Yankee Stadium. We'll have that for you here on NBC. Then out to Southern California, 6,900 miles left. The team's going to make it back to South Bend, but that's the road. If they get to South Ca uh, Southern California with the win, they'll get to the playoff. For what it's worth, the teams ahead of Notre Dame in the current AP poll, the first four, they travel a total of about 7,300 miles the rest of the way. So Notre Dame, by not being in a conference, has the challenge of having to go across the country to do this here down the stretch. For more on this game, let's go back down to the field. Liam McHugh and Chris Sims. Mike, thanks. Yeah, we heard Brian Kelly say it was a wake-up call. Doug echoed that sentiment. And then you heard from Ian Book. And I think the idea for me is, yeah, it was good enough today. But deep down inside, we know going forward, we want to be in the college football playoff. And what we saw today isn't good enough to get you there. What stood out? Well, it, it isn't good enough to get you where you want to go at the end of the day. But I will say this, having played college football and watching it, every team other than Alabama has games like this. And... If you can win them, that's the that's sign of a good football team to overcome not your best day against a pit team that played one of their better games all year. There's things to work on. Defense was awesome. Yep. Offense was sloppy in the pass game and the run game. Let's take a look at that sloppy offense because Ian Book had mentioned situational awareness or maybe a lack thereof. That's right. I, I mean, okay, first there, there's a jumping off, jumping off sides on the punt. Here's Ian Book, first play. I think there's people there on the first drive. Open downfield. He didn't like it. Feel comfortable with the look. Another time, he scrambles outside of the pocket. He wasn't seeing the field very clearly early on. And I think we have to give the credit to Pat Narduzzi when it yeah. comes to that because he changed up the looks, the coverages, the blitzes, the stunts up front. And I think that's why we saw Ian Book off his game. Give other teams a hint of what they could do against their I, I think at the very least, it's going to say we can't line up in the same one or two defenses all game against Notre Dame because when Ian Book and Chip Long get a get a feel for what your plan of attack is, they're pretty hard to stop. Today, Chip Long, who I have a lot of respect for as an offensive play caller and play designer, I don't think he could ever get in a flow for the game because Pitt changed it up so well. I do think that we'll see, you'll see a little bit of that as a plan of attack against Notre Dame going forward. Notre Dame, they get the win here today. Mike was talking about the upcoming college football playoffs. And election process for that but we take a look at the AP top 10 right now obviously Alabama on top but Georgia is really the one you need to highlight here because they trail LSU 
16 to 13. That game's in the second half. Ohio State already took care of business. 16 to 3, excuse me, in the second half there. And Clemson, of course, on the open week, which Notre Dame has going forward. So, final thought for this Notre Dame team. What you saw here from Pitt and what needs to change going forward? Well, uh, hey, they, they played a big game last week. They're kids. They read the headlines. They had the midterms, all of that. I still think this is a very good football team. The defense is awesome. The offense is still really good. It just wasn't their best game. They have to find other ways to, to in games like this, not just drop back and throw at every play. Work the middle of the field as far as the run game between the tackles. They get too in love with the outside run game at times. But I'm not panicked about this. We're seeing a really good Georgia team struggle today and not have their best day, yep. and they might lose. Notre Dame overcame some big-time obstacles and still got And that's win. college football. It Notre Dame can have an off week here right. and still wind up moving up on the pole if right. LSU hangs on against Georgia. So we send it back up to Mike. Okay, great points, guys. The one part of college football and the joy of it for some, the frustration for others, is there's a subjective quality. And Pittsburgh is a three and four team, so the subjective part of this one will factor in. Well, they messed around with a Pittsburgh team that has lost uh, big to Penn State and UCF. UCF Memphis score is interesting. Liam showed you there. They're down 13. Final thought on what you saw here and looking forward for the Irish. Well, a gutty performance in the fourth quarter, second half, great defensive performance overall to win the game. Now you've got a bye week to get healthy mm -hmm. and then go play Navy, which is a whole different challenge. Right. And that's always a good thing when you're playing one of the service academies, especially Army, Navy, or Georgia Tech in the ACC, to have a week off to prepare because what they give you offensively is a little bit different. And then we're back here to see Florida State. And Chris made the point, can defenses take something from this? Florida State and USC have the athletes who could do that on this remaining schedule. Yeah, they were willing to leave the corners one-on-one -on -one at times yep. and then give exotic blitzes, mix it up on third down. Headline today from South Bend, the Irish survive. They win 19-14. They move to 7-0 and on the season. You want to hear more from Brian Kelly? His press conference is on NBCSports.com momentarily. See it 7 Eastern for football night before the Chiefs, Patrick Mahomes, and the undefeated Chiefs against the Patriots in Foxborough on Sunday Night Football. Seth Myers is the host. Paul Simons, the musical guest, live across the country Saturday Night Live tonight on NBC. We'll see you from here in a month in Florida State Notre Dame. Rob Hyland, our producer, Pierre Musa, our director, with Terry McCauley, Catherine Tappan, Doug Flute, Mike Tarico. So long from South Bend.